Okay, uh, we live? Okay, uh, we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue, shall we? Uh, let's see, we've just fixed the updated blank data card builds. Uh, or this one, rather. Had some signals missing. I need a bunch of speed modules to get this thing online properly. How many are we missing here? Uh, 74? What? It... Surely not. That doesn't sound right, does it? Four. Thirty. Uh... Oh, that would be if I put speed modules in every... Okay. So, we're missing 12. Uh, these ones just have speed 3s because we don't need them to... Uh, to go that fast to keep up with the ratio. Um, okay. 29... Twenty nine plus five thirty three. That's still a lot. Yeah, that that's still way more than I thought um, that we would need here. How many do we have at the moment? Uh, zero. Um, if we've got some speed sixes somewhere else, I don't know where they are. I think we just picked them up actually. Okay, uh, in that case, let's just continue with... What? Uh, okay. Bots are having a holiday. Um, it's probably because some of our... One of our spiders is probably over full. Maybe a scaffolding spider, actually? We've only got so many of those, we can check them all. No, it's definitely one of the regular construction spiders. Alright, let's check on out Outpost. We've actually finished the next quarter of this thing. Fantastic. Let's throw down the next lot of that. And... Uh, the next, oops, the next quarter of landfill, very, very carefully. That looks right. Yep, that should be fine. Um, what else have we got going on? On Nalvis, uh, we need a Holmium cable build. I spent a little time offline after the stream yesterday and made this. Uh, it's a very simple recipe. One Holmium plate, one plastic in, two cable out. So I didn't think it would be that interesting a build, but where's our construction spiders? Oh, that's right. We've updated all of our Omni smelters with better modules in the beacons. So now they're more than twice as fast. Um, that'll help. Uh, but yeah, this build right here... Uh, I had to, I wouldn't exactly say invent, I had to reshape some lane balances uh, that I made. They are tributes to the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Uh, they'll be a little bit easier to see once the spiders actually get here. 
but yeah, the uh, the output cable, the Holmium cable output, when we do have tier six modules here, uh, was significantly faster than I was expecting. Um, to the point where we're actually going to have the trains come straight into the block uh, for direct insertion. Um, so it was a more challenging build than I expected it to be. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's all sorted out now. This should be... Well, I would think... Uh, okay, how is it... Last, last I checked, we couldn't keep up with Holmium Cable. Oh, don't tell me. We've got a train limit of one on this thing. I... I think... I think that might be the entire reason we're short on Holmium Cable in various places in our factory right now. Hey, Daniel. Bat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. You're welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Mamma mia, that's a lot of cables. Yeah. I thought this wasn't enough. Um, getting 180 second, uh, 180 per second into the factory. Uh, it might not be enough. But what I didn't notice until today is I still had this set to a train limit of one by default. Um, which probably there's absolutely no reason to do for pickup stations. Uh, I'm thinking maybe, maybe I should update my standard pickup station blueprint and have, uh, have like six trains al allowed to queue up for resources here, because they're only going to do it if there's six train loads of stuff here. We can fit 7.2 in 24 chests. Um, but yeah, that's why I was going to build this Holmium cable build here. We actually have uh, on the other hand, this one was also limited to one train, uh, and so was this. And we had uh, Holmium Plate, Holmium Solenoid completely full. Um, and I'm pretty sure this wasn't. Uh, and Holmium Cable was the only one we were having trouble with. So, I will still make that Holmium Cable build. That should be... I mean, I think just half of this is probably more than we're ever going to need. I think I will build half of this. Um, I actually have the Constant Combinator here switched off on the right side. Um, just for the sake of... We'll, we'll, we'll only run the left one by default. And if we want to double it, we easily can. Uh, so let's get rid of this mirrored right side. Before the spiders get here. Not much is different. The only difference is because of the asymmetry of this thing versus this thing because the belts favor the right side because of the inserters uh, but yeah that should be fine I think this is probably more reasonable um, it will, I, I think this one will ensure that we're soaking in a Holmium cable for a long time to come. I unlocked energy beams today and made a cheeky autoglave up in orbit. 
Soon I'll be on my way to make a big array at my star's orbit. Then I can beam energy to my outposts. The coal planet I found last night with 30% biters is only a thousand size, so I already cleared it out with weapon cannons. Nice. Did you get a coal planet in your own solar system? Lucky. I don't know what the odds are or anything, but... Iron, coal, copper, core fragments, I got none of that in uh, Calidus. I also had to go... I had to go interstellar for beryl. I did get holmanite, cryonite, and iridite. Um, not to mention vitamelange and vulcanite. I think beryl was the only exotic resource that I was forced to go interstellar for. Uh, but that's only if you ignore the temporary mines in the asteroid belts. It's my deadwood, indeed. Okay, um, how much landfill do we have? Uh, about zero. That's fine. Can the bots reach this? E yes. Yes, I think they can. Cool. We'll leave them to building that. Oh, wow. Okay. Alright. This will take a minute. That's fine. I'd rather just put my attention somewhere else while that happens, rather than try and speed it up. Had a massive barrel mine on the same planet as my Vulcanite, so I just sent it home with capsules. No barrel core fragments for me yet. Fair enough. It'd be a bit too easy if, uh, if every single type could be found in the solar system, right? Let's go tier 3 modules for now. Uh, hello? There we go. I was afraid the spiders weren't carrying them. And then... Tier 6 rods when we can. Um, do we have tier 6 prods up here? We do not. No need to prioritize them just yet. And these stations are already switched on. Is LTN okay? Are we short any resources? That should go there, actually. Oh, that's right. We've got LTN manager. I keep forgetting. Uh, how do I do that? Uh, I've forgotten the shortcut key. Didn't I have a... Here we go. LTN manager. Control T. Uh, inventory. Plastic. 1.1 million. I think, I think that's, that's gonna be okay. Uh, and what was the other one? Holmium plate. We know we've got that. It's right over here. What? 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 Okay. Uh, the one thing... Oh, it did finally figure out it can go the other way. Hmm. That makes me wonder if I should change this signal or not. I guess, I mean, I know the trains have a strong preference to not run through a train station to get somewhere else. Um, I don't think it's good to have this train sitting here in general, blocking other trains, not just this one. Um, 
but I wish I could somehow configure it so that a train is allowed to stop taking up this area, but not this area. But I don't think that's really possible, so... Uh... This wasn't a problem when I had a train limit of one over here. So I guess there is a reason to not have a default of more than one train coming into a pickup station. I do not like having to make exceptions um, to the rail signals. Although, just swapping out a regular signal for a chain signal, um, that's really not so bad. Okay, so once these two figure themselves out, uh, the rest of the trains that are waiting to pick up the Holmium cable here... Uh, they're not going to park themselves in the way of all of these other trains. I think that swap just broke it. That train was coming out of the stop. This one? No, it was already trying to go through this way, just like the last one. And then after, I don't know, a minute, 30 seconds or something, um, it... it Judging by the last train, this will figure out after a while that, oh, I can actually go this way instead. Um, I don't know why it takes that long to do it. Presumably, if they check for something like that much more often, it's going to be disastrous for UPS. I don't know, you'd think... You'd think you could get the trains to check for something like that more often than, like, once per minute, though. I could just force this train to take a little trip around here and then come back. But I want to... I want to witness this working the way I just saw it earlier, if we can. It is taking a surprisingly long time. Maybe force it to go manual slash automatic, see if that kicks it over. I think that would probably just reset the amount of time where it's going to try to go out this way. Because it's going to try to avoid going through this train stop. And then it'll eventually give up and go out through this way. I'm I'm getting over waiting to see this work. Let's just send you over there. Hey Mars. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How go the trains? Uh pretty well actually. Although I should have anticipated problems when I gave this a train limit of six. Uh, but I think it was just because of those signals, actually. Also, we know now that we can make these chain signals, and that'll be fine. Oof, that UPS? What UPS? Sigma Bean, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And we finally got Holmium Plate on the way here. It's being picked up from the mall for some reason. That's a little odd. Do I have a higher priority on this thing? Oh, I actually do. Yeah. Because it's to get rid of excess items. Um that we're not supposed to have fluttering up the mall. What about 
Plastic? Why is it taking so long to get plastic? Oh, that's right, we're short on trains. I forgot about this. Okay, uh, why don't we just add some trains, which I think is what I was doing here. Away you go. I don't actually have a big old... A while ago, I had a cyst I had it like ten, a ten stack of spots where we can put trains into the network here. Uh, don't have that right now, so we're going to be putting them in one at a time, like so. I just have to keep remembering to do that. It only takes a second, but we have to wait a little while for each one of them. Um, okay, this is... I'm pretty sure this build is complete. I just need to see it in motion to make sure. Uh, as spooky as this thing looks... Uh, it's really just a reshaped version of, uh, this thing. And you can tell that I edited an existing one that I had, because we can clearly save a tile or two here. A little bit of belt. And then this didn't need to be an underground. Uh, this part could tuck in here, but I wanted to keep that clearly separate from this balancer. Um, but yeah, as weird as these two look, it's basically just the usual 4-4 four to four balancer with 50% of, uh, the items of the belt, on, on the belt having the chance to swap sides if everything's backed up. So we've got the middle, instead of the outside going to the middle, having these swapper things, I went the middle going to the outside, the middle going to the outside. And these middle one, uh, these outside ones just go straight through to the middle. Okay, what's next then? Quichen. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Uh, military, not military, material science. We've got material science 3 here. Everything's waiting for extended catalog. Extended catalog is waiting on sheer volume, I think of laser shielding data and particle shielding data. Particle shielding data is happening on our lovely sushi belt. We're actually short on... That's interesting. We're not short on blank data cards. But these ones are having trouble getting blank data cards. Why is that? Let's check our rate. When we've got eight of these, it'll be going 10 blank data cards per second and 10 space platform plating per second. We can fit 22.5 per second on half a belt. And we've got half a belt with these alternating, but it's very clearly not moving at full speed. Why is that? Hmm. We've got input priority on this side for the sake of the iridium plate, but I think with this circuit, a circuit wire reading and blocking this, I don't think we need to do that. And I think we would be better off. I actually think we'd be better off with input priority 
on the left. That way this can go full speed. Why, Why do we have... Uh... Something seems to be a little off here. We've got a lot of space platform plating on this section of the belt. Even though... Even though we've got a system here with circuit control as well that makes sure that we have exactly the same amount of blank data card and plating coming onto the belt. Missing modules equals different consumption speeds. Uh, yeah, but the ratio of consumption... It's only speed modules. The ratio of consumption for blank data card and space platform plating is still one to one. So either we had all of these on the belt earlier and I didn't see them, which I don't think is too likely. Yeah, I don't understand that. No clue then? Yeah. I mean, it's functional. It's not very good at the moment. Yeah, I don't understand. Like, we've very clearly got Oh, I see a little bit of extra plate here. So I should see an extra bit of blank data card somewhere. Maybe not? Have we been occasionally putting in like one little extra bit of plate? Platform plating? And if so, why? So, to review how this works, we've got belts saying uh, read belt contents pulse on all three of these. Uh, this one is if blank data card is less than or equal to space platform plating, it'll go through. And this one is if blank data card is greater than or equal the space platform plating, that'll go through. We read from this belt here, times negative one, so it's subtracting. We read from these two as positive. Um, so every time something goes through here, we add one. Every time something goes through here, we subtract one. And this is a memory cell. Uh, so we know basically we know how many blank data cards and space platform plating are in this section. Okay, this is a good example. We've stopped on the blank data cards. So currently we've got two more space platform plating than blank data cards that have gone through here. Um, so this is stopped. And once we get blank data cards again, this will go through. Um... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is working. So, how on earth did we end up with all of these space platform plating in here? Maybe you need filtered output on the splitter? Oh! That should only be... There's like one or two blank data cards here. That's a good point, but... It shouldn't make a difference cumulatively. It should literally just be like two off. Indefinitely. 
Let's bring our spiders over here again. Wait, I was uh, I was going to fix whatever this is. You've got split stacks, no doubt. Yep. And there's probably another one in here with the same problem. I don't know where it is. Can I use debug to see who belongs to who? No. Is it the leader? It's the leader. Okay. I should look for a mod to see if I can just auto sort this just like the player inventory. That would be very helpful, and behavior that I would have guessed was just built into the game, to be honest. Alright, let's bring our spiders back over here, and we'll see if... See if we can't fix this belt. Definitely getting the one extra every little bit um no actually because this is counting how many of each have gone through here and like if if this blank data card is here indefinitely um which actually accounts for the two blank data card difference that we've got here possibly no, I think that's just because of this running out. But, um... When items go through here, they are counted. When items go through here, they are counted as minus one. And we do not let items through if they are greater than or... E uh, if they are greater than the other one. If, if blank data card is less than or equal to space platform plating, it can go through here, and vice versa. So there's no way that should have a cumulative effect. Yeah. Not sure. How are we on our reactor? Uh, a little bit quicker than expected. That's good. I could grab a bunch of stone from our various robot network areas. And have it brought over to our landfill machines. Speed things up just a little bit. Do we have a storage chest? Yeah, we do. There's, there's already a bunch of stone in it, actually. Let's make sure we clear that out. Fantastic. It shouldn't make a difference, but splitters have weird internal logic. Uh, it doesn't really matter with the splitter, because... Like, once this part's backed up, um, it's the same as if we're blocking that left side. Okay, so the good thing... 
about this design is because we're not using a counter for the sushi belt, if there's a problem with it, we can just clear everything and we don't have to reset the counter. So there's our half of half a belt of Iridium Plate. I really quite like this one. Very reliable, very succinct. And I guess time will have to tell if resetting that is going to... Oh, I need to reset this memory cell, I think. No, we've got like one, two, maybe three space platform plating in here already. I think it counts. Uh, actually, why don't we just remove that? And now I can reset this timer. Not timer, memory cell. Put that back. And that's perfect. So the, the moment this enters um, this tile, we count it as positive one. And then as soon as that's detected as greater than blank data card, it's get, it gets blocked. So this won't be allowed to go through until blank data card arrives here. Uh, and it should be perfectly lined up. Um, I would really like to see... some blank data cards here so we can see this thing working. I don't suppose we have some available for pickup right now. 6k and this one will be a lot slower. 410. It just got picked up actually. I could steal it. I think I'll I think I will steal it. D cargo. Wait, what? No. Wrong temporary stop. Okay. So go to here, no delay, and then go to the nearest station with that name, which is this one. I'm surprised there was another station with that exact same name up here somewhere. Especially since I put these... No, it was these signals I put in an order I wouldn't normally, so I guess that tracks. Okay, here come our cards. Uh, I guess I can drop the super high priority now. And... What the... Wait, what? Hold on. You... You what? We got extra blank data cards here at the start. Um... I don't think there's any reason why these shouldn't be stack inserters. After the way I changed those back, actually. That might help with that. We want we want it to be a solid line of cards. Oh, why is it set to stack size one? That's yeah, not what we're looking for. Well, it should It should be the same number of each that have gone through here. But I feel like that's saying, don't believe my lying eyes. I'm pretty sure I saw extra blank data cards come through at first. Hmm. We'll let it run for a little while and see what happens. Oh, there seems to be some extra plating to match the extra blank data cards. Maybe I didn't see something. 
two or three went ahead before the splitter put the platform on. If we don't have input priority. That's really weird. We are getting one to one right now, though. And then there's a bit of extra plating here. Oh. We've actually got... Yeah, we ran out of plating, that's why. So currently we're ahead on blank data cards. Uh, supposedly. These usually fail when your power falls below 50%. I think we're okay on power. Yeah, I think we'll be okay for power in orbit. If, uh... I suppose what might be better to do is take what I've learned with this and just apply that to blank data cards and space platform plating. So each of those are allowed to use half of half a belt. That might do the job, actually. I think it's letting the buffer of three that are already on the belt through. Yeah, but those three have been counted. Because they get counted the moment that they enter this tile. Or this tile. So this one's blocked at the moment because the count for blank data card is greater than space platform plating. And it doesn't, uh, this one down here doesn't enable disable, it just reads. So as soon as, uh, as soon as something gets through the splitter, in other words, as soon as something gets through these tiles that block it, it will get counted as minus one. Albeit with a one tile delay. Alright, what about the other one? Uh... This one, I think, is working just fine. We just can't keep up with blank data cards, ever. There's just so, so many of them. Um, demanded. What's wrong here? Red circuits? Wait, what? Oh, that's right. This one is slow at the moment because we've got red circuits here and they were only on one side. Until this gets low enough to request... How much have we got here? Hard to say. It's the same thing on both sides. This one just ran out. Uh, it might be worth removing those chests. If, if I was there individually, I would... I don't think it's possible. I'm going to try using... No, I, I can't use even distribution with the navigation satellite. That might be a bit OP. Um... Yeah, if I was there in person, I would just grab a little bit of this, use even distribution, drag it across all of these chests. Uh, and another lazy way we could fix this is switch off the input, allow it to empty, and then once it's empty, we'll bring some trains in, and it'll be balanced from then on. The only factor that keeps it slightly imbalanced being these belts are going to be a little bit longer coming from this side 
but that'll just be an offset. Uh, it won't be a cumulative offset. Okay. Spiders are almost there. I don't think we'd ever get to the point where this um, doesn't work at least a bit. What I might do, actually, since we've got, like, two separate blocks here but with the same outputs, um, why don't I... Let me just use this part to get where it lines up. Why don't I make another one here with a slightly different design? And that way we can compare them. So we're going to have our... Filtered output over here. Let's put these here first. Does that line up? Yeah, I, I think... So if that was there... This is one tile off. Move all of these over one tile. That kind of looks like I'm experiencing double vision. Uh, so these ones are going to go here. Let's check on our spiders. Alright, so we just want to delete these chests temporarily. Pick up all the red circuits. Oh, that would have been good to realize sooner. I don't need the spiders to do this. Let's get them back to the mall. I'm sure they'll be overfilled in a second. Hold on, I'm getting my 3D glasses. <laughs> Indeed. I should switch this off, actually. Oh. Mmm. Never mind. Is this going to work itself out, or... Yeah, this actually got emptied already. Which normally would be a bad thing. I don't think the bots are going to be able to return those steel chests. So we'll need to get the spiders back here and remember to switch that back on. Yeah, it's not even... But as long as we don't let it get it too low, it'll be effectively balanced. Okay, they're not having any trouble getting the red circuits out, looks like. I definitely want to use this thing for the Iridium Plate. That's been working very well. I can't tell exactly where it's supposed to go. Uh, I'll wait till the spiders get there. How many uh, steam turbines have we got left? I think we can properly fill out three quarters, perhaps. Uh, we've got 165 remaining. And we need 103 per quarter. So yeah, we can mostly finish this thing while we're here. Why did we not get 
the fast inserter of all things. Because we don't have one. That's not what I was expecting. Where have we used 45 fast inserters? There's no inserters in this build. Zero. There's only yellow inserters here, and there are not that many of them. There's no inserters here. Actually, there's seven. That's not a whole lot. I don't understand where our fast... Oh, probably... I uh, pr probably used them in the other uh, other builds, like um, this one, perhaps? 18 fast inserters. And Angulus. Another 8. Another 8. 25. Okay. That makes sense. But, of course, I had them... What? Apparently there is a bot trying to deliver a fast inserter here. But, yeah. That'll be fine. I think I'll make it a stack. Why not? And then... Wherever we can find stone... That's covered by the robot network... We can get some extra landfill... We're going to accumulate a bunch of coal. Um, that might end up filling up our storage chest. Alright, I'll leave him to that for now. Do you have power issues or is that slow because of UPS. Yes, it's UPS. We're down to a little bit less than half of normal speed. Kerbusa, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Simon says, hold on, I'm getting my 3D... Oh, that's right. Uh, and Kano Bonion as well. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, uh, so let's check on that chromium cable build. We still don't have plastic here. Oh yes we do. Products finished 1255. Fantastic. Uh, and I've got balances here. So we've got way more than enough uh, inserters to keep up with the machines. Direct inserting into these chests. 24 chests on each side. The fastest possible insert to the train. Um, we've got alternating wire colors on this balance loader on the right versus this one on the left. That's just so that we can read the contents of the chests on both sides going to this logistic train stop without having an extra combinator so that we've got a separate total for um, these Holmium cables and these Holmium cables. So we've got this side balanced and this side balanced. So we're not having, like, these inserters waiting on these ones. Uh, so where is our plastic right now? It's all the way over there. I kind of wanted to see this in motion. And once again, we're picking up Holmium Cable from the mall. Maybe there's something systemically wrong here. Um, let's see. Our provide threshold to take stuff from the mall is 320. That's two train loads. Holmium Cable... Uh, sorry, Holmium Plate. We are requesting... Zero, as far as I can tell. How 
how did we end up with so much holmium plate here that... 500,000? What? How... What? How did we end up with 5,000 holmium plate in the mole? Oh, I think I know. I, I think I know. I think that was from when I forgot to whitelist holmium plate in a block like this, perhaps? And the trash trains kept coming to pick it up? And we didn't have enough demand for it to be consumed somewhere else, I, I, I suppose. Okay. Also, this should have a higher number of trains allowed. Uh, Zithia, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, so that's going to take a little while. Uh, I, I thought it was odd that even if I did have a request for, like, a train load of Holmium plate here, um that I just happened to catch a train being loaded by Holmium Plate here twice when I checked in on it. But yeah, you can see it all over the place in the storage chests. 500,000 Holmium Plate has made its way back here before we noticed. Well, this is why it's good to have uh, a system to automatically take away the excess. Okay, meanwhile in orbit, I want our spiders to go back down here. Looks like they've been cleared out. Fantastic. This one... What is happening? It's Probably okay to leave that train there. I still need to get these data cards out. How many data cards have we got here? Hmm. Well, it's not blocking anything. So once again, we've theoretically completed Material Science 4, but it's taking a while to actually get there. This is just waiting on blank data cards. Blank data cards, are we bottlenecked on machines or stuff? Oh, and I totally forgot to replace these, but the spiders walked past them. Fantastic. Uh, how much... We're only requesting two trainloads of advanced circuits here. I don't think that's good enough. 57 per second. We can fit 14.4 trainloads of... Um, red circuits here. 448,000. Okay, let's go... Let, let's go ham on... Building up a backlog of red circuits here. Because I do not want... I think I already calculated that with copper plate. 16,000 times 14 train loads. 224k. Let's call this 200,000. Oh, and we need to up the train limit if we haven't already. Fantastic. Yeah, I would rather make sure we have a bunch of this here. Never enough blank data cards. I just started space exploration. Uh, what do you think of it? Zithiel. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good day, t and chat. Hope you're doing well. Raren, good to see you again. Hope you're doing well also. Welcome, welcome. 
Uh, so we kind of need... Well, first of all, we need the red circuits to get back here. And they are on their way. But we actually kind of need those speed modules. Uh, I remember this one's broken because I haven't got a crafting combinator yet. Where's the leader of the scaffolders? I'm just going to get you to temporarily request crafting combinators. Literally just one is all you need. Should be a bot bringing it right about now. Here it comes. Oh, wow. What? Uh, I think we need some superchargers. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Um. I did. I should. Oh, I, I never anticipated this many RoboPorts not being enough, but then again, I wasn't, like, doubling some of these builds. Good evening, Hughes Mike. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Seems good so far, but streamer's UPS is scaring me a little. Just build a bit smaller than I do. You'll be fine. Are you playing with just the space exploration mod, or does it include Crastorio K2? Uh, just space exploration, a bunch of quality of life stuff, and crafting combinators. That's how I've got one machine, or two machines, let's say one machine doing all of the work to get our efficiency six modules. Are we going to build this? Oh, we did. Fantastic. Alright, let's get rid of that request for now. And... Uh, I need the construction spiders again. Okay, before I forget, let's put in superchargers. should be way more than enough. Actually, these things can charge 50 bots at a time and it's like instantaneous, so it's really just more about placement so they don't go to the roboports instead. Okay. Uh, kind of makes the sushi thing a bit less urgent. Let me just check this is... I can't rotate this. If this goes here... And I copy-paste flip this... That's lined up. Okay, cool. That goes there. That goes there. Most of this is just going to be uh, mirrored. Although I might... What's the max rate out of all of these? We're looking at 16. Only 20 per second. I think we need those speed modules somewhere else. And we're obviously not getting that rate out of these right now. So I'll take those back for the moment. Are we going to... 
I think we're not actually going to take those because we don't have the speed threes. So let's just set those to empty. I will put them in the beacon, however. Why is this where it is? That should line up. Good. And then this part goes here. Uh, I might just... I don't know, is the asymmetry too much to bear, or is this that much neater? I think I can live with that. Although, maybe something like... Or... For... That's better. Okay. So, we've already got the Iridium plate. Half of half a belt working fine. That's, that's good. Um, what I'm hoping I can do is if I do the water belt trick with iridium plate I take that and we'll use it for blank data cards and uh, space platform plating separately so we're just going to put in a quarter belt bottleneck for each of those and then merge them together so rather than trying to keep track of the count um, or force a one-to-one -one ratio of these going through here, we're just going to let them through, but each resource can only take up half of their half the belt. Uh, we've got some Iridium plate here. Fantastic. Do I want to... I can't copy paste flip this, I don't think. I'm going to deliberately put that one tile away. Because this part's going to be a little bit different. Um, we will have... A half belt of Iridium plate. Wait, I didn't flip this. I think I do want to flip it. Wait, I did flip it. Darp. So that's gonna go through there. And as for blank data cards and Space platform plating. Come to think of it. No, that should be fine. Okay, so we're going to bring those together like so. here.
Uh, I think I have to mirror. So Iridium Plate needs to be on the outside belt, which means right side if we're facing south. Currently it's going to be on the left side. We had to swap this over here as well. Okay. Except I think this one would put it onto the right side of the belt, and this one would probably put it onto the right side of the belt, whereas this one would be left side of the belt. So that's going to have to be a little bit asymmetrical. I know. Uh, I kind of need to move these up a little bit. I'll get rid of the filter inserters until I'm absolutely sure. Actually, I'll just get rid of the iridium plate ones. And this way I can tell where everything goes. Oh, I guess if we're doing this, it doesn't matter which side of the belt things are on up here. Cool. Let's copy, paste, flip this. And we obviously won't be using this one this time. Uh, we might... Why does that look different? Because this is only skipping one time. What? What's... what am I missing here? Confusion. Oh, I see. It's the offset of where that splitter is. Yep. Because this part's different, because this always goes to the right side. Okay. Um, so copy-paste isn't going to save the day here. It's going to look something like this. So that part should work for Iridium Plate. And then... I may or may not need to swap the sides of the belt for the blank data cards. Let's see, blank data cards on the right side, plating on the left side. One of them's going to need to be swapped. Night Dancer, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, also, let's throw this piping in while we're at it. And I could probably just connect these, to be honest. 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay. So, what I want to do... Is have one of these for... blank data cards, and one of them for space platform plating, preferably right next to each other, for the look of the thing. Or can we do better than that? I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. Uh, 
uh, and we need to make sure they're on the same side of the belt first. So blank, one of these is going to have to swap. Uh, blank data card is on the right side. Scaffolding is on the left side. And I think the easiest way to do that is going to be like this, isn't it? So scaffolding on the left side comes out here, is still on the left side, actually. Blank data cards on the right side. Still on the right side. What am I... Okay. Uh... This is a little bit awkward to fit. I mean, we've got all the space in the world to do this, but... What if I swapped it? If scaffolding comes down here, scaffolding is on the left side. And blank data cards are on the right side. So if we do this, blank data cards are now going to have to be on the left side. Uh, which side is Iridium Plate on? Uh, Iridium Plate is on the right side. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so blank data card, right side, becomes the left side. Scaffolding, left side, stays on the left side. And then we just merge those two together after using the thing here that limits each to half of half a belt. And hopefully, uh, all we have to do at that point is merge it in. I hope. Let's see what that actually does. And we'll want to be telling LTN what we've actually got here. Tidy that up a little bit. Might be waiting on blank data cards for a minute if I don't bump this priority up. How many trains are we requesting? Five. Fantastic. If we can do this, but not with nothing but uh, belt witchcraft, um, I'm actually going to be pretty pleased with that. Because the great thing about something like this is it's not dependent on any power or circ uh, counting the items on the belt or anything like that. Also, probably best to test it when the resources are coming in one by one. That way it shows us if our stuff is robust. Particle stream. Alright, what have we got going on here? It's getting built relatively quickly. Might have something to do with the stone that I salvaged, but I don't think that's going to scale that much. Much coal is taking up nothing. Okay, perfect. Give to me a little bit more stone. Okay. Oh, 
to orbit. Actually, back to Nalvis. I want to see this thing working. It's still... Okay, it's not not working. Every time I check in on this, we've done thousands more products per machine. But I haven't actually got to see it in motion. Good timing this time. We've got 500,000 Holmium plate to pick up from the mall. Uh, so quite the backlog to get rid of here. And we definitely want mostly Holmium cable. Well, at least that's the thing that we've needed more throughput for when it comes to Holmium products. Nice. For all of the little challenges building this thing, the actual design broadly is pretty simple. It's just waiting for this part to saturate before the rest of these will come online because it's balancing the chests. Are the inserters keeping up? Whoops. They did... Yeah, they're keeping up. Easily. Alright, cool. I don't think we're going to be having trouble with Holmium Cable in the foreseeable future. What about plating? We are nowhere near sending another shuttle. Do we have some in orbit already? I recall sending some manually. Yeah, we've run out of plating. I'm not surprised. But that means I can't test this. I guess I'll send another early shuttle. How much have we got? Um, 8,000, 9.1 thousand. Uh, that represents more than a trainload of data. For each of those. Are we making plating at full speed? Yeah, it looks like it. I could double this, but I think that's overkill. We're just waiting for this to saturate. Um, so I'll pay a little bit of... Well, more than a little bit. I'll pay some liquid rocket fuel. And get that plating in orbit. We've been totally saturated on liquid rocket fuel for a long time now. So I think that's worth it. Auto save. And away we go. ETA is about 30, 20 or 30 seconds. Meanwhile in orbit, do we have blank data cards? Of course not. There's never enough blank data cards. Uh, why don't we get our spiders to drop the tier 6 speed modules that they just picked up over here? Did you solve the lack of steel? Um, I believe so. Let's see. 36k steel... 64, 98, 107, 106, 65, and 71. That's quite a bit. Um, yeah, we've more than doubled the speed of our Omni smelters by upgrading the beacons to tier 6 modules. 
by ideas on how to get better at the circuit network. Krasus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, it's a journey. You do figure out one little thing at a time and sort of build up not just a, like, mental blueprint book of a bunch of little tricks that are helpful, but also the process itself of how you go about thinking of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Low-level programming solutions, as in you don't get to work with, like, functions or language or anything like that. You have to solve these problems with these tiny little units of information. Um... Basically, just always be working on something that's just a little bit challenging for you. Was it you're here while you're here, whilst you're here? Why not check LTN Manager's inventory to see what you have millions of and what's struggling? Sure. The reason I look at the stations themselves with the omni smelters is i've set a provide stack threshold of considerably more than two train loads over here because of the way these loaders work um because we've got two of them i don't want to request stone brick at both of these locations and then have it turn out there's not enough stone brick to fill those out and have the trains leave. So if we ignore the first 400 stacks of stone, 150k is still lots. Um, so LTN manager isn't going to recognize that. But that said, um, we do have... 1.3 million steel plate in the rail network. That is quite promising. I imagine we've got some in storage. We don't have any in storage yet. Oof, copper shortage? Copper shortage. You might be right about that. 2.5 million copper plate. Uh, maybe not. 91k. Got plenty of copper going to green circuits here. 230k. Where's this requested 1.6 million in transit, 288,000? Are there any stations that need copper that are actually missing it? Doesn't look like it. I was looking at the request side, fair enough. Okay. That's looking really good. What was I doing with the spiders up here? Oh yeah, I need these sped up. Which we've got now. We're still missing a few speed modules here. Oh, 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 I need them to build superchargers up here. Uh, it looks like things have settled down compared to when I decided to build the superchargers. I'm not sure why. Why are we... Oh, what? What the... Ha what? What? Why are we still... Oh. Oh, that's why I didn't put, um... No, that's not a reason. I didn't whitelist speed 
uh, tier 6 modules here just because they're going to these chests anyway, I suppose. But it seems we somehow got our tier 6 modules in here relatively recently anyway. How are their cargo rockets set? Oh, there was a crash, wasn't there? What a mess. Repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That's kind of fast. Kind of, kind of, sort of fast. And bear in mind, this is at 24 UPS. And there go the tier 3s. Spiders are arriving. Now we've got superchargers. That should hopefully prevent this kind of bot cloud nonsense. I'll put another one. Actually, how many bots do we have here? 3,000 logistic and 1,378 construction, but that includes all of this over here. Um, I think I would like to remove a couple of these roboports and replace them with superchargers. Although I should probably... Uh, it's fine. And down here as well. Maybe... Do the crashes get more often if there's more bots in a logistic network? If we're still under the threshold for swarm safety? Or is it just... If I split this up into different blocks, it's not going to result in less bot crashing, is it? Oh, we got some sixes. Beautiful. I don't understand how we're still... 201,000 repair packs. I think it's just taking that long to get rid of them. And because we keep putting the repair packs in here first, I think these modules have actually been here a long time. Uh, I kind of need them though, so can we maybe take that? Look at that line of bots. It's like a solid object. Give to me the speed modules, please. Fantastic. Where are you taking those? Oh boy. Uh, why don't I send you back to the mall for now? Okay, let's check out Sushi version 2.0. We have blank data cards. Completely saturated on this half belt. That is not what I wanted to see at all. That's why I had this uh, this thing blocking sending iridium plate through here. Oh, I remember this. Actually, if we look at this, uh, if we look at this design. I think what I should be doing... I don't see how I'm going to do it with three different... No, I do see how I'm going to do it with three different resources. One, two, three. In the end, I'm going to end up copying that, I think. So if I merge this back in here... It's going to need a couple more splitters. 
And then I can do the equivalent of this. This is okay to solve the problem for just Iridium Plate, but I can't do it separately with these three resources, can I? I suppose I can, except it won't be perfect. No request mechanism in vanilla? I imagine this is what LTN helps with. Do you know if it's possible in vanilla to have a train station be used for different types of resources? Like open up for copper train if copper runs out, open up for iron train if iron runs out. Uh, I think it might be. But I don't know how you, how you do it. Uh, someone who is much more, let's say, computer science-y than me, um, showed me how they apparently did it a long time ago, and I understood none of it. I've come a long way in my understanding of circuit networks and so on since then, uh, but I suspect if I looked at it now, I would still not understand it. You can calculate per station if a train ought to come, but no way to call one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how you would do it with vanilla, if it's even possible. Pretty sure it is possible. I mean... Since we've got circuit logic, you could build a computer in Factorio. But the question isn't whether you can figure out the logic. Like, the problem is the limitations of vanilla train scheduling. Might need to control remote stations. Yeah. Oh, that is looking much better for the bots. I wonder if this is going to have them crash less often, because I think if they're hovering, waiting to recharge, that counts as a bot in flight for the purposes of a bot interference wind. The sooner they get back to the roboport, the lower we keep the count of bots that are in flight. Yeah, we've got, like, only 200 flying at the moment. I never thought of it this way. Superchargers... In, in bot-heavy areas, superchargers are actually going to save bot lives. That's interesting. How's our production of sixes at the moment? Uh, 4.1 per minute in the last hour. That's actually great. Yeah, that's... That's approaching the level where I can just use these whenever and wherever I want. Um, or it probably is already at that level, but it's like catching up to my rate of using them. This needs a couple of tier 3s. Do I not... How did, how did I get, like, a couple of tier 3s here and then run out? That seems kind of weird. This one's got speed 6s. That means we've finished putting tier 6s in this block. Nice. So here's our rate calculation. Uh, cosmic water is barely positive. Uh, polished data substrate is a little bit positive. Contaminated cosmic water is slightly negative, which is what we want. We want to consume all of the contaminated cosmic water. 
uh, and turn it back into, well, turn 99% of it back into cosmic water. We're putting in 250 copper plate per second, 124 advanced circuits, 178, uh, 73 rough data so storage substrate, and we're getting 41 blank data cards per second. Although it doesn't look like that on the belt at the moment. Probably because we've run out of rough data storage substrates. Uh, and I think that is simply because we've only got the one pickup for them over here. So we're actually just bottlenecking on this right now for blank data cards, which is kind of great. Mucky does it somehow? Uh, what does Mucky do? Old method of having stackers at the load and unload, and the conditions were just path to stacker, then pick up, leave, full stacker, drop, leave, empty, repeat. So you have different stackers for different... You have different lanes for the stackers for different resources somehow. So with SE, instead of making buses, it worth making production cells for individual RS... RSS. Uh, one of the reasons I really love rail blocks for space exploration in particular is there's so many um, there's so many recipes that have secondary outputs. In fact, I don't think anything in vanilla does this, does it? Uh, I guess there's coverx. Um, but yeah, you, you're always dealing with secondary outputs, whether it's junk data cards, scrap. Um, maybe it's recycled stuff, although I've come to prefer putting recycled things straight back into a nearby machine instead of looping it around or something. Um, but it makes it much, much easier to deal with all of those outputs if you just shove it back into the rail network. Or even random outputs, indeed. You could have one stacker per resource, but it's possible to do on just a single track. In a sense, the advanced oil processing has extra output. That's true. Except you can crack it down to what it needs to be on site quite easily. Uh, well, definitely easy compared to what we deal with in space exploration. Uh, space platform plating, where are you? What? I distinctly remember launching the ships early. They're empty, so they have dropped off. Don't tell me all the plati plating got delivered here. Or did we get some... Products finished, zero. There's no plating. There's no room for the plating, because this is broken. Hmm. With vanilla, I could make a train depot. Not sure how you could do it with LTN. Uh, you just give it the is depot signal, or am I missing something in what you're trying to say? Um, yeah, I kind of want to attempt this thing for the three different resources. So this is designed to have room for eight resources on the belt. Using different sides of the belt, uh, each of them is limited to... Uh, a half of a half of a half belt. Yeah, so a quarter of a half belt. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
and 7 if you include the space signs. Uh, what we're looking for is a half of a half belt for three different resources. So I think it's going to look like this, but one less splitter here. Which basically came down to just this. Except... Except that was removing uh, this splitter, I think. So we need to merge. We need this to merge back into here, I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's basically it. It might be easier than I thought. It might be a lot easier than I thought. Where's our spider... Spider gang? I still need to fix this thing. This would be a lot easier if I was here in person. I could just pick up the cards. Okay, I want to do the sushi thing first. But to do that, I need the space platform plating, and I have no idea where it went. I, I, okay, I have one guess where I, where it went. Uh, and that would be here. Which would imply this thing is working well enough. Because it's all being consumed. We're actually at 8.3k. I actually forgot to connect this here. So that's our first train load of particle beam shield data. And we're only missing laser shield data to get our first material science for. Which is just asking for blank data cards. So if I get rid of the super high priority we've got here, that'll probably help. What are we missing? It's always rough data storage substrates now. We've satisfied the other inputs very, very well. Uh, rough data storage substrate is not here. I believe... oh. This is still automated, yes. We've got some coming. There's only one train load at a time. That's not helping. Um, I do want to set up a shuttle for rough data storage substrates. I also want to update this build, which has... 200 machines and we're only getting uh, 118 rough data storage substrates per second except we appear to be bottlenecked on iron plate right now we're asking for two train loads so I should probably have a train limit of two at least make it four since we're asking for two train loads of glass as well Glass is half as slow, half as fast as iron plate. And I might just copy those settings. I know we've got another block doing this. Here it is. Uh, if I can line this up, there we go. This one... There's iron plate here. What? And there's no glass here. Wait, is this one broken? Yay. 
I think vanilla methods rely on the labeling of stations with the same name plus fixed schedules instantiated with train per resource type looping through these stations. Yes. Which makes it very difficult if you want something that's a bit more reactive, shall we say? Why? Okay, so glass... There's glass here, and there's iron plate here. Well, Glass and iron plate. Oh. How did this not get jammed ages ago, if that's the case? Uh, we do need iron plate up here, but apparently we've got enough to not trigger a delivery. And I think if Iron Plate came up here, that would get everything moving again. Um, so I'm going to double the requests. I need to make a new block for these, but this is a stopgap. Okay. It's a shame. I, I don't like how long it takes to get the wide area beacons. Um, what does it take? Wide area. Energy... Su oh, that's tier 2. Energy 2. That's a little bit of a nuisance. I would definitely beeline for this in another playthrough. Because I've got so many builds that use the tier 1 beacons that I just want to tear up and do all over again which just adds a lot of busy work, a, a lot of time to the playthrough. Not that I don't enjoy designing these things, but it sort of uh, arrests the progression. What Vanilla is really missing is the ability to, to tell a train to skip X stations when it leaves another stop. Yes, I've been saying that. Um, in fact, this was my first run with LTN. And before that, I would say many times, if only I could tell a train to skip a station under certain conditions, then I could do so, so, so much more with Vanilla. Of course, one of those stations must do some refueling while the train is stopped. Indeed. Name in base? Krasus? Uh, sure. Let's go. I think we've got plenty of room over here. Uh, do we not have an R? We do not have an R over there. C R A Z U S. Pretty sure we've got a Z over here. U S. And why don't I take advantage of radar construction pylons? Oh, that's going to connect. I don't want it to connect. BG Niemand, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Dev dot also. Dev dot. Let's go with uh, this. Uh, I thought we had a V handy. Hold up. D. O. And T. V 
BG Niemand. Uh, G. N. How do I spell? I E M. A N D. And D. B G name. Cool. Let's fit that up here, perhaps. Schnunski. Okie dokie, name and base. Now everyone wants it, indeed. Um, I feel like that could fit somewhat. Uh, I don't know where to put it. S C H M U N. S C H. N U N T Z G I Fantastic. And how about that goes about here? Oh, the bots are trying to get over here, but they keep going back. Let's give him a charger. Mars? <laughs> Just when you thought you were done, indeed. Uh, double M A R double S. R double S There was an R here, wasn't there? There we go. And where would be a good fit? About here. Seems good. Or is that that's the first time I've doubled up I don't think I'll do that. How about... How about I just put Mars here? Did you clear natives of... Uh, Nalvis of Biters? Yes, I did. And uh, quite loving the relatively new feature where once you've gotten rid of the Biters on a planet, you can confirm hostile extinction. And after that, we can trim the surface. So as you can see, we've got a lot... We had Nalvis completely explored. We've got a lot less of it taking up save, uh, save file space now. And more importantly, uh, a lot less of it increasing the time it takes to save the game. Nearly neatly between the power poles, indeed. Okay, uh, how are we doing for... Uh, we're not going to get any plating anytime soon. Let's get you over here. And I'll just stop worrying about those speed modules for now. We're going to delete this. Hopefully the spiders have enough space this time to at least get all of the blank data cards. But not blank. Fantastic. 
And you can be on your merry way. That's one last thing to remember to fix. Actually, I might be a little bit lazy and get the bots to unload the spiders here. How fast... Oh, I should have checked this before I removed those speed modules. Uh, let's suppose we don't bother putting the speed sixes in for a while. We're looking at 11 data per second. 11.4 space platform plating per second. Uh, and this build gives us only 9.5, actually. Uh, it is using... Mostly speed threes. I don't want to use that many speed sixes at this stage of the game. Uh, so I think I will double this build, which is going to be a little bit of a nuisance. Um, I wish I'd done what I did with the Holmium cable build, where I made the super overkill version and then just removed the second half of it for now. Um, but it shouldn't take too long. Uh, to add this here. I'll remove these robo-ports for the moment. And we want... I guess on the plus side, I don't need to get the spiders involved. I want this here. Can't copy paste the rail because it'll snap one tile off from where we need to put it. Steel goes here. This will be a upside down right 90 per second. Get rid of these. Copy, paste, flip this. Uh, that's a lot cleaner than what I came up with on another build. Yeah, that's actually a pretty nice fit for, for a lane balancer up here. Okay. What was it I did over here? here. Oh, I changed it. I think I was thinking of another build. Or something I was doing while I was figuring this one out. Never mind. Okay, so we're going to do a right 90 per second. Set. Get rid of that. And get rid of the lane balancer because we need to preserve what is on what side of the belt. Uh, we're going to copy paste flip this, I think. And desperately try and figure out where that goes. How high up is it here? And this one is one tile off the middle of that. So I think this is it. Could be wrong. This looks right. Uh, let's switch off our input station until we're ready. Doesn't matter which side of the belt Heat Shield and LDS are on. The ratio is one to one regardless. I would need to remove... 
Yeah, the, the, the station here isn't going to be able to be a perfect copy-paste flip job. But I think the rest of it is. And that should line up with that. Uh, robots are probably... Oh, they're not disconnected from each other. Cool. Let's just put this here for now. Alright, so does that line up with our station? It does. Fantastic. Should be able to copy, paste, flip this, I think. Yes. And then we need some circuit magic. Why is that bot hovering? Okay, you're fine. Oh, there's a lot of bots hovering. Uh-oh. Hello? Do you think double-headed trains are strictly better slash easier to use? Or do you see a huge difference compared to single-headed trains, as in a less acceleration? Um, I really like the double-headed trains for this build, uh, these rail blocks, because the great thing about these rail blocks, and I, I, I've got some ideas for improving them for the next run. I think these crisscross things could take up significantly less space. But uh, the great thing about these is on the roundabouts, the trains are allowed to go both ways. Which means all we have to do, especially because it's a double-headed train, I, I don't think I'm ever going back to single-headers. Um... All we have to do to have an input or output train station is just have a bit of rail coming off like that, for example. Um, we don't need to have like, a, you know, it, it comes in here and then goes out here, takes up much, much, much more space, and the trains can only go in and out in one direction. Um, the trains are very, very reluctant to leave going in the direction where they're crossing another station, which most of the time is okay, but I think they're a bit too keen on not doing that. As we saw over here earlier, when I had the wrong, well, I wouldn't call it the wrong, but when I had a, a different signal here, this train was blocked from leaving by a train that was sitting here. It wasn't actually blocked because it could have left this way, but it waited for so long before it decided that it's okay to cross this part where there's a train stop, that it's almost not worth having that option. Uh, but more to the point, it takes so much less space um, for your train stops. I mean, here's the old Omni Smelter design. We've got, if between LTN and the double headed trains with this uh, train block design, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it could be eight. Uh, and then I've actually gotten rid of, here we go, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Um, this thing has room for 12 different train stations, effectively. That's... that's a lot. Uh, yeah, much, much, much easier to work with once you get your head around it. I see... I think I have been firmly on the single-headed camp, but I can see it simplifies the use hugely. Multi-direction may also simplify things, but I feel like it can also complicate things. I'll have to try double-headed trains. Yeah, I definitely made the expected mistakes uh, as I was learning to deal with double-headed trains. 
Uh, I did try having... So, uh, with the current design, the straight rail is all one way. And the roundabouts are... The trains are allowed to go both ways. Um, previously, I tried having the trains allowed to go both ways on the straight rail. That didn't work out so well. They ended up blocking each other. However, I think... And I'm not going to try this until I do, like, another playthrough... If I had occasion to build a new rail block network on another planet, like I thought I was going to do on Moors at first, but it turned out all of our outposts boil down to basically this. Um, if I was going to do a new rail network on another planet, I would try it there, but I'll save it for another playthrough. Um, but I think now that I understand signaling just that little bit better. Um, I could probably make it so that... Okay, so trains can go left-hand drive only on the straight rail. What I could do instead is chain signals only for right-hand drive. So a train can go through... Basically, the train can use the right-hand lane as an overtaking lane only. And they're allowed to stop only in the left lane. I think that would probably prevent the traffic jams that we had before. I don't know how much you would necessarily gain from that. It might be a lot, it might be very little, or it might somehow be net negative in some way that I can't foresee, but I'll definitely give it a try next time. Um, okay, we need to set this up. So we're reading from... I'm going to flip that over. We're reading from the logistic train stop output to get the amount of stuff and type that the train is asking for. We subtract all of the signals that we don't want, each greater than zero output each. We read from the vanilla-ish part of the station read train contents, times negative one. On this wire we've got how much stuff is left to be put in the train. And I actually did something different this time. Uh, to simplify it a bit and reduce the combinator count, we've got... if you have four or five or eight or ten uh, inserters pointed at the cargo wagon, and in other words, it divides evenly into the 40 stacks that are going into it. Um, you can actually skip the part where we do the remainder. So if we're, if we're getting a full train load, full cargo wagon, and this number of inserters divides evenly into it, uh, we don't have to worry about that part. So we don't have the extra circuitry where just one inserter per cargo wagon puts the last little bit in. So that is gonna be that. So on this wire right here we've got the amount of stuff we're still trying to put in the train. Each divided by 16 output each. Uh... Set stack size. Oh yeah, that's what we're doing. Instead of having an S signal for stack size, since we've got plating on this side and scaffolding on this side, we're just using the respective uh, signal type to set the stack size. And I think it's been working. I'm not too surprised by that but I haven't actually witnessed it working. Alright, let's switch this on. We seem to be lacking steel, which is a bit of a surprise, considering we've got 128,000 steel here. Why are you picking up Vulcanite block? Something is wrong here. We've got 25,000 Vulcanite block. 
which is good. We're asking for 32,000 to keep this whole thing running. 25k plus what's in these chests, which is 16k and change. Um, but there should have been... Oh. Yeah. I just... Whoops. So these negatives on the provider stations? What's our default? Mod settings, LTN. Uh, I think it's a trillion or something. Our default provide and request threshold is set very, very high, so it effectively says don't think of this resource as being available unless we say it is. So we've got a provide stack threshold put in here. But then we want to make sure we don't actually make these resources available for pickup from this station. And I never actually got around to putting Vulcanite on here because it, it, this never came up before. Um, so somehow we got a bunch of extra Vulcanite here. I'm going to go and patch the rest of these so that that doesn't happen again. And one more. All the way over here. I need to put some uh, superchargers in here as well, I think. Anyway, uh, let's go check. I'm not going to get you to take the Vulcanite. I would need to patch in how much fits in a train. And I don't want that here because I don't want the trains coming here for Vulcanite. actually pretty shocking that in all of this time that's only happened once. But it won't be happening again. I use 141s and with slight modifications THAX's rail system works well since the hard work was done already. Indeed. Uh, definitely nothing wrong with that. I mean, I don't think it's a... I, I think belts are a great example. I don't think it's a very common skill uh, that people would make something like this by themselves. I think the main... Uh, well, for myself anyway, the main thing I struggle with trying to design something like this is just holding that many different variables in my short-term memory simultaneously. Uh, if you can do that, this is actually kind of a simple problem. Simple, uh, quote-unquote. Um, but it's not the sort of thing that my brain is optimized for. I can handle uh, anything up to 4 to 4, and I understand lane balances quite well. So I've designed a bunch of these myself, which I'm quite happy with. But anything beyond that, or anything like 3 to 2 balances, or 2 to 3 balances, for example, uh, it's actually pretty hard for me to hold all of that in my brain at the same time, how that works. And that's... This particular problem is not the kind of challenge I necessarily enjoy or am good at, so I'll leave that part to someone else. Although, I, 
I'm struggling with it for now, but I am kind of enjoying trying to figure out... Especially since, to some extent, it's actually working and I'm making progress. Um, trying to figure out some new ways to do sushi with just splitters. Okay, where are we? Uh, I was trying to get plating over here. But we're not getting anything delivered? Really? Uh, is this connected? It is. Oh, that's right. We still need a whole lot more trains. I keep forgetting. Um, I should probably build something for putting a bunch of trains into the network at the same time. If I can get... If I can phase out these uh, cargo rockets, I could use all of this space for that. Or down here, actually. That's a pretty good idea. Do I still have the blueprint? Did I make a blueprint for that? Kinda. Yeah, we've got the rail included here so that it snaps. Um, why don't we put this here? Actually, see where this fits. How about like that? LTN. Okay. So then, should have room for signals if I do this. We don't even need the train stop. Uh, let's do some requester chests. I'll wait till it gets there so I can give it the settings. Oh, that's kind of bad. Uh, I'll get this train in motion and then I'll squeeze some signals in here, I think. Or two of them if I have to. Okay, that is going to be... I don't think we have nuclear fuel in this block, do we? No. Not the kind that goes in trains. Let's just put some solid rocket fuel. Why uh oh I see. And that goes there. Your to-do list for today had add trains on it, indeed. We'll get there. How many? Oh. <laughs> yeah, we are short a few trains here. I don't know if this means we need like 16 or if it's just because we're behind as well. Regardless, I will add like 16 trains or so. Oh, we need that straight rail down here as well. Oh, what? It's an easy mistake to make. Yeah, I'm surprised when I looked at it how slow our space platform scaffolding is going. 
Even if the trains were keeping up. Uh, so this build, without the speed modules added, was 11.04 per second. And I believe this was like 9. 9.5 per second. Uh, why are we still waiting for this rail? I think it's coming. I'll send the spiders there just in case we can speed things up a bit. How are we doing on... What's this planet called? Sanj. I knew what... I knew what the name of it felt like, but I couldn't remember the actual characters. Looks like we've got our landfill here. So that is quarter number three. And once that's built, uh, we'll throw out the last one. We don't have the steam turbines, etc., to completely build this last section, but... Well, but nothing. Maybe I should just leave as soon as this part's built. Depends how much landfill we've got accumulated. 262, and we need like... 2.4k to fill out that quarter. Well, what is going on here? Oh, you poor silly things. They'll get there eventually. Okay. Uh, material science. It's mainly just blank data cards we need to shove into here to get our first Material 4. Also, why don't we have Astro 4? That should have happened ages ago. I think I saw that blank up there thinking it was Material 4. Uh, we are missing Tier 4 Catalog, which is missing nothing, actually. It's just a bit slow. I'll send the spiders to upgrade that. Looks like the bots did a good enough. What? Oh, no. No, some of the spiders are still over full, but I still think it'll be worth upgrading these computers. Might have taken a month off work to continue my SE run. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Uh, tr spiders are doing okay. Cool. I think we've got three blocks available here. What was it I wanted to bring up by space? Uh, by space shuttle. Oh, that's right. It was um. Rough data storage substrates. Because we're actually bottlenecking. What? 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 Is this a problem? I don't think so. So we're missing copper plate on this side, red circuits on this side, but we are requesting more. There's, that, there's an awful lot of... Uh, there's actually not that much. I was going to say there's a lot of stuff in here for it to be blocked by lack of resources, but there's like 12 copper plate per chest. So, not so much. Where is our copper plate? Uh-oh. Copper plate. 
We've got a shuttle almost full. Two hundred and ten K copper plate. I think we're really bottlenecking on these output stations at this point. Uh that's not what I wanted to hear, but Wait, this one doesn't have the filters set. Uh, let's copy this and bring it over here. And then we've got all of our output products, uh, preferably stored close to the output stations. And that'll speed things up more than a bit. It may... why are there logistic bots in this chest? I don't know how that happened. I could... Okay, we do have a system for putting them back into the network already, so that's fine. Alright, I'm going to take a little break. Uh, back in a few minutes or so. Um, I'll leave you with some LTN screensaver. Uh, but you know, what won't be back in a few minutes or so is products and services, since I'm going to be AFK. Back soon.
Okay, let's continue, shall we? Uh, screensaver, there we go. Um, so we seem to have an awful lot of copper available, but it's not getting to our shuttles. 204,000. 266,000. 274,000. Yeah, we really need to do something about this output station. What I had before may have been better. Where we had like... What was it? How many... How much stuff are we outputting here? How many different things? 11. And we've got 12... Uh... We can put 12 chests around each, uh, cargo wagon. The easiest way to do it would be one request a chest for each and set the... If we're not going to use any circuit network, uh, we could just set the stack size to be something that is a uh, that's something that's going to fit into the cargo wagon wagon exactly. I used to have it so that we had uh, t before I was going to include vitamin lunch roast um, two chests for iron and two chests for copper, but we can't fit that anymore. And from the math that I did, that would barely keep up. That was before we upgraded the modules and the beacons here to tier 6. So that's not going to cut it. Um, this dynamic loader is by far the fastest and most reliable one I've come up with. But the trouble is it has to wait until these chests are full before we start putting stuff into the train. If I set it so that we start loading before that, um, I mean, realistically, we should expect that to always work, but if the bots ever fail to keep up with the inserters, then we're going to get an uneven load in the train and it's going to go all wonky. Well, the train itself will get what it needs, but the next train is going to get a little gift of unexpected glass. I want to make a version of this that has more inserters and requester chests and so on, but the trouble with that is... Do I not have any chests? My robots? I don't have any robots. There we go. Uh, the problem is we need active provider chests to take away whatever's left over after the train goes. The only reason we need a row of requester chests and then a row of steel chests is because we can't read contents and set requests dynamically. Uh, I suppose... Okay, that might be an idea. Eleven different things. That gives us four stacks for each resource. What if instead of... What if... It in... We're not going to be able to read the contents anyway. Like, it's not... We're not going to be able to make use of it. But what if instead of setting the requests dynamically, 
I set all of these to request... What? Oh. We're not going to need circuit wire on this one. I don't think. We're going to request two stacks of each... Oh, sorry, we could do four, couldn't we? Uh, so let's say... 397? So we don't go over the stack. Um, but we'll request four stacks of each resource that we get from uh, the station. J101, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, eight. Wait, Cryonite Rod? Yeah, Cryonite Rod. Glass and stone brick, four ingots, Cryonite Rod, and Vitamelange Roast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So let's just pretend we're requesting four stacks of each of those. And then we use a filter inserter when we're looking for one resource or the other. The bots will immediately rush to fill the void of whatever resource. Uh, currently, I guess I could change this much. We're only looking for two stacks of whatever we're trying to put in here. The bots tend to keep it evenly balanced anyway, but if I... If I allowed more stacks, we would, we would get bots bring this stuff faster, I think, but we would end up with way more stuff that we have to throw away later. But if we just have four stacks of each available all the time, then these things can start shoving stuff into the steel chests immediately. As soon as the train arrives. And then as soon as we've got a train load, we can load that. That's still going to take about twice as long. It's going to take about as long as if we had two inserters per cargo wagon. So the problem is still... We either need to find a better way to fit active provider chests so that we can fit more inserters per cargo wagon, which I don't thing is possible? Probably. Uh, that'll do. To be able to see where the cargo wagons would go. Another option would be... I think we'd need a counting circuit for each individual inserter, if I do it the way I'm thinking of. If we can stack control and count exactly how much stuff this is putting into the steel chest, so that it doesn't have anything it's holding onto afterwards, and it puts in exactly 40 stacks, or however many stacks, I don't suppose there's a common denominator like 10, perhaps. Um, let's see, stack size, 10, 50, 20, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100 200. Oh, wait, we're doing ingots, not plate. Um, actually, can I look at an aquatite as well? If I look at the combinator. Yeah. A hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. 
a hundred, a hundred, fifty, twenty, ten. Ten is the lowest. That's actually great. So... Hmm. I do... I was going to say I do foresee one problem with this, but then I actually saw a way around it. So, if we are requesting... The logistic network is not aware of what's in the requester chests, as in... Well, it is aware of it. It doesn't count it. If you look at... If you mouse over a chest and it shows what's in the logistics storage system, or if we look at it like this, or if we, more importantly, get a signal from a roboport, say what's in the logistic network. Um, so this stuff here doesn't count towards the provide stack threshold. So what if we had... Uh, let's just assume we've got a cargo wagon that lines up here. What if we request four stacks of each? Maybe a little bit more aggressively with the Naquium ingot and Iridium ingots, for example. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. For the iron, we, we've got a little bit of leeway. We've got 48 stacks and 11... Um, 11 types of item we need to put in here. So a few of them can go over. So I think with, like, Naquium, I would definitely request the full 40, for example. Um... One, two, three, four. Eleven times four, forty-four. Yeah, that's perfect. Everything below a stack size, a stack size of a hundred, will request the full four stacks, and it doesn't matter if it goes a little bit over. Or maybe we'll even request like four point nine stacks or whatever. Okay, um, so we're going to request those. We're going to use filter inserters when the train arrives to put in whatever goes in here. We're going to set the stack size to 10. Uh, and that way we're going to get exactly what needs to go in here. Uh, if we do four or five chests per cargo wagon or 10, or 8. Um, then we wouldn't need to do some circuit magic to make sure this doesn't stick out later, theoretically. The only risk here is if we run out of these resources while we're trying to load this. We'll still read from these chests and make sure they're absolutely full. Will we? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, we'll, we'll read from these chests and make sure there's enough to fill the train before we start loading. So it will take about twice as much as it would normally take time-wise to fill the train, but we'll still have... Um... Since the whole point is to go faster, I think I will do the six per... Uh, six per cargo wagon. So we'll need a precise loader circuit to manage that. That's fine. So we'll read from these chests. Actually, I think... 
unless we're going to have different amounts in some of these chests, um, we probably should limit it to five so that it divides into the cargo wagon evenly. And we'll just limit the chests to uh, four stacks each if we're doing this on both sides. So each of these will have four stacks. Once it's full, we can do the same trick that we've been doing, uh, whereby we've got the positive number coming in from the chests, negative of what fits into the train, minus one, and then anything equals negative one, we trigger our latch and we start loading. And the reason that I would expect this to not be a problem whereby we'd run out of resources here before the train comes. Actually, how many stacks did I say? 40 divided by 10 is 4. We're already asking for like 4 stacks in each of these. A little bit more for the smaller ones. We're only going slightly under the four stacks to make sure the bots don't over insert. And then this doesn't count towards the what's being read from the robo network here. Um, so we'll definitely have... We should have like just under or just over a train load of each resource available right here all the time. And then once the provide stack threshold reads that there's X amount in the network here, it should be trivial to make sure that this is going to get loaded. So we should be able to load our train in sync without the inserters sticking out afterwards with minimal delay that way. And ignoring the extra mucking about that we have to do, in terms of chest count alone, that is two and a half times faster. Yeah, this should be way faster. Okay, uh, it's just about time to attempt to build that remotely while working with the existing rail block. Cool. How much landfill do we have here? Um, 764. That's actually going faster than expected. I will build out this as much as we can before we go. Oh. Oh, we're already missing a lot of heat exchanges. I didn't even notice. I'm a little embarrassed I didn't notice. I thought we had a whole bunch of them here. Apparently not. I don't have them in my inventory or something. No. Okay, let's see what we can do. Uh, construction spiders. This will be our guinea pig. Um, I'll disconnect this. What? Timing? I swear that happened the same frame, or even a tick later. As soon as I removed this from the uh, from knowing that it had stuff available, a train came. Uh, a train was scheduled to come here, and I have no idea which one it is. We've got thirty-seven trains with this stuff. I'm just gonna have to wait for it. Uh, but yeah, this will be where we build our guinea pig station. As soon as that's clear.
let's have a look at orbit. Um, we're going to be waiting on plating for a while. I'm more concerned about getting blank data cards here. And it looks like if I don't priority that, we're going to be waiting for a while. What is... Oh, that's just red circuits. Just going to mark that there so I don't forget to take it away later. Uh, I think I added one more digit. We need rough data storage substrates at higher throughput. What else can we do in orbit while we wait for certain things or fix them? Oh, I wanted to see if Astro 4 was looking better. Yeah, it is. We've just doubled the speed of it. I could put more modules in, but I don't have the spiders carrying tier 3s at the moment. How can I tell which spider these guys are trying to drop in on? Is it not that one? And away they go. I can't find... I can't find which one these other bots are hovering around. Is it this one? There we go. And this one's having problems as well. Okay. Oh, we can upgrade this thing. That would be more efficient. Fantastic. Can you stop doing what you're doing? Fantastic. Alright, that'll be a lot faster. Don't know if we were actually bottlenecking on machine speed or resources there, though. Probably resources, since we're waiting on asteroid belt probe data. Um, but that should be enough. Oh, I think it, I think the train already took it. To get some extended catalog here. Science pack four is on the belt. Uh-oh. Uh... I suspected this day would come. We don't actually have... Yeah, we, we tried to balance this, but I think the lag time from the belt made things bad enough so that we end up with no Astro 4 in here, oddly enough. The way we're doing it is Astro 4 goes onto the belt unconditionally. Tier 1 has to be less than or equal to tier 2. Tier 2 has to be less than or equal to tier 3, and so on. But we're not measuring it on the belt, we're not using a counting machine or anything. It's just reading from this chest. I guess I should have used a counter if I was going to do that. Uh, what I might do, it should be pretty easy actually, is just make four chests. And some filter inserters. Let's get our spiders back here. Make sure they don't cross over spaceships. So we're probably going to have to make... I don't see why we wouldn't have to make this fix for all of 
of our four sciences. Happy birthday, Feldak. Thank you very much for the seven months. Much appreciated. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, okay, so we have Astro 4. That's good to know. We just need to get it where it's supposed to go. What are we missing here? A constant combinator that shouldn't be there. Okay, cool. Uh, do we have... Spiders are in place. We have our train. That should be the last of... The trains coming into this station. Happy birthday. Uh, I guess... I guess it's my birthday now. I'll take it. Thank you, thank you. Alright, so we're emptying this. Silent Storm, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh... And I'll just wait for the bots to empty that. Any second now. They are taking their sweet time to empty an active provider. I would have thought that was a super high priority. How many bots have we got in motion? Uh, 2,700. Wait, can we do an upgrade planner to swap out RoboPorts with superchargers? That would be very useful. Nope, apparently not. I want to see what sort of effect it has if we just put like four of them in the middle. I'm guessing the bots won't prioritize them. It is, but only if there is places to put it in. Uh, there's plenty of places to put things. Yeah, we've got lots of unfiltered chests up here. Okay, let's remove this. Uh, we may yet want our latch still, but I can copy paste that from somewhere else. train station will definitely be staying in the same place. Alright, so the idea is steel chests, uh, five per cargo wagon. The only reason I'm not doing six is so that we can, uh, well, it's actually going to be ten per cargo wagon. So cargo wagon, 40 slots, we're going to do four per chest. And we're going to request uh, four stacks or so of everything. Iron plate will be 397. The only reason I put it at less than 400 is because the bots like to bring extra sometimes. Um... The car cargo capacity is plus 3, so if we set that to 397, it'll never go over 400. Uh, same for copper plate. Steel. Glass. Let me copy-paste this. Uh, stone brick. And then, what else have we got here? Cryonite rod, beryllium ingot are the same. Beryllium ingot. Holmium ingot is half of that. So... Stack size is 50, 4 stacks is 200, so 197. Uh, 
to... What is this stack to? 20. Oh, that's right. For everything that is stack size 50 or lower, I was going to allow another stack. Uh, so we're going to go 247. And... Uh, Iridium ingot is stack size 20. So... Five stacks is a hundred, let's say ninety-seven. Naquium ingot is only ten. Uh, so we're going for forty-seven. Vitamelange roast is the same as Holmium ingot. So two hundred and forty-seven. And then we put stack filter inserters. I can't see a thing. <laughs> what did you think about the corn dog I had? It was my v my first corn dog. Americans and New Zealanders had some objections about too much things on top. Uh, we don't really have corn dogs here. But all of that food that you posted looked ridiculously good. Um, kind of jealous, not gonna lie. Okay, so the one thing these inserters will all have in common is stack size 10. Uh, the reason for that is... We want the exact amounts put into these chests. And the cargo wagons, for that matter. Well, I may... No, I think I said I was going to do six. No, I went back on that because we want to be able to measure that these chests are full. I could still do that. I could just have extra. And then the trains will load a bit faster. I think that's reasonable. Okay. So... I think we're still just going to do four stacks in each chest. Uh, 40 divided by 12. 3.33. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do stack size 10, chest limit 4 stacks, and we're going to need different values to check um, if the chests are full, because we're going to be looking for uh, 6 4s, 24... Oh, sorry, 6 times 8. 48 times 4. Uh, 192 stacks in these chests before we declare that, yes, we've got everything that the train needs and it's going to be perfectly balanced and we can start swinging the inserters and knowing that they'll stay in sync. Uh, so... I will use stack size 10 here. Uh, these are going to be dynamic stack size. And we're going to do the usual precise loader. Uh, I'm going to connect these wires now. And set filters, set stack size. We're going to have to use S because we don't know what signal we're going to be receiving otherwise. Copy that across. What the? I think that goes here, actually. Uh, 
This is going to be a lot faster. Look at those waves of bots. Okay, so we're going to need to read from all of these chests. I can barely see what I'm doing. Fantastic. Uh, and we're not going to connect that to the logistic train stop input. We're going to connect it to the robo network. How much of this are we going to reuse? We're definitely going to be using the usual precise loader. We're going to use the latch still. Um, I'll just copy that from over there. We're going to need to change the values that we use to check if it's full. I cannot... I really cannot see what I'm doing through this bot cloud. We need to set the filters on these based on... Oh. Yeah, I think... We're still going to have to switch these off um, when the latch goes green. And we're going to need to set the filters based on... Where are you getting your filters from? Oh, you're not. You're not setting filters because this is setting requests. Okay, so green... That just connects directly. Okay. So I think we connect the logistic train stop output directly to these inserters. We're going to set filters. Stack size will be 10. And we can't... Uh, we can't set filters and use enable disable. So what we're going to have to do instead is have a decider combinator here that says if green signal... Oh, uh, not like that. Uh, if green signal greater than zero... No, if green signal equals zero. Yeah. If green signal equals zero, output everything... I don't think it matters if we do one or input count. We're just using that to set filters. Um, and set filters is automatically going to ignore anything like these signals. It's not going to matter. The bots are still at it. I guess I'm not too surprised. We're asking for more than a train load of every single resource here. Seems like they're starting to calm down. We definitely need more superchargers. And as long as we don't run out of space for the bots to go to sleep. Much fewer robo-ports. Um... I might just... remove these. We'll do it one step at a time. And hopefully we won't see any perverse, unexpected behaviors. Oh. No, I didn't cut in on any of the robo-ports we're reading from. I'm pretty sure. Got a few bots there, indeed. Data Gnome, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, we'll need to change these to reflect that we're looking for 4 times 48 stacks, 192. Uh, so for stack size 100, 19200. 
plus one, or minus one rather. Negative 19,201. So that number gets added to the positive number that's in the chests. And then with that we say if anything equals negative one, then the chests are loaded and we're ready to load our train. Once that happens, we want to stop trying to put anything into these chests. And I guess I'll put this up here actually. Oh, I also want to start building our precise loader because I'll probably want to piggyback off that wire as well. So we're going to do the usual uh, each divided by 24 output each and stack size and then if we're below 24 do the other thing. This is going to remove the unwanted signals from logistic train stop output. This is going to get subtract what's already in the train. And then we've got on this green wire what remains to be put in the train. Uh, each divided by 24. Wait, 48. We've got 48 inserters. Divided by 48, output each, and output S for stack size, and then uh, if we're less than 48, just pass through the filter and nothing else. Stack size will be 1 to just one of these inserters per cargo wagon. Or two of them, actually. That should still work out okay. I'm pretty sure we did this over here. And because it'll work out to a multiple of four, um, it'll still load in precisely the same amount. Yeah, we actually did that here. So, copy-paste. That'll ensure we don't make a mistake. And green wire goes to the one inserter out of six. Red wire goes to all of them. Um... Logistic train stop output, this goes to here, and then this also goes up here. I just want to check where that normally goes with this build as well. That goes to here. If everything equals zero from the logistic train stop output, we know that there's no train here. So we can red signal our latch. And that way we don't have to add anything like read stopped train signal T, which is going to complicate things. Uh, so that indeed does go here. Uh, if green equals zero, output everything input count. I think that might fit a bit more snugly down here. And that is going to... Our inserters. And we're going to set filters. The enabled condition is contained here. Green has to equal zero. Stack size 10. And that should do it. 
And then we need to make sure we do that down here as well. Why is it going to get a bit hard to see through? But we know that up here and down here are going to be the same. Um... If green signal equals zero output, everything input count. We're going to get the green signal from here, from the memory cell. And we also need to look for a green signal before we allow our loading to happen. So it's just like up here, green signal equals zero, we need to do something to say green signal has to be greater than zero. Just have to figure out where to put it. Probably between these two. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. How am I going to squeeze this in? I mean, if I just do it like this and then we need the green signal wire down here I think this would be a good fit actually that makes it more readable even though those wires are crisscrossing I would prefer if this was like here though but then these two I don't know where we're going to... Maybe like this? Oh yeah, that's... That's definitely going to be... Neater. Uh-oh. 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 Okay. We're, we're fine. This is fine. And I think that might be our circuit. Uh, I didn't finish patching these. Negative 19201, that's for the stack size 100. Um, stack size 50, 192 stacks. 9600... And then we've got stack size 20. Wait, was it 196 or 192? 4 times 48. 192. I want to double check this one now. 50 times 192. 19,600, good. Uh, 20 times 192, 3840, that is a number that keeps popping up, 3840, uh, 3841 rather, no of bases of 2, indeed, uh, and then we've got 10, which is going to be half of this, I'll use the calculator anyway, I did not want to mess this up. 1920, 1921, and then stack size 50, 9600. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. Moment of truth. We'll connect this to the RoboPort. Oh, I also need to give it some LTN settings. And one of the nice things about this is we no longer need a ridiculously high provide stack threshold. Um, in fact, if we have even, like, if this... The requester chests are the first place all of these items are going are gonna to go. So if we have even, like, probably one stack of steel outside of this, 
um, we could probably safely assume that we can fill a train. But... Just to be safe, I'll set it to one train load for now. Um, so we'll connect that red wire. And... Actually, I kind of want to update the station name while we're at it. If that light doesn't turn yellow in a second. Uh, what should I call this? Industrial furnace provider. Kind of like how I call the um, stations here spaceship provider. We're not actually providing industrial furnaces, but it sort of gets the meaning across. Alright, let's switch that on. And quite soon we should see a train coming. I would be surprised that it's gotten to the point that I had to upgrade this loader so severely, but considering that we more than doubled our smelting speed with these module upgrades, uh, it's really not that surprising. Uh, I might just bump up the priority on this. Ten million, that should do it. Why did they both go blue? Do we have a train coming? We do. That was a, another good reason to update the station name. We can actually find our train. We're looking for glass. So, unfortunately, there's no way to query LTN with what this train is looking for before the train actually gets here. But as soon as it does get here, we're going to get a signal of 16,000 glass along with these signals, which we need to remove for this math stuff, because we're using each. Um, the glass signal is going to go up here. Uh, if green signal equals zero, which it is, we're going to pass everything through to these inserters. We're going to set the filter to glass. Stack size is 10. And we're going to be putting... Oh, we don't have cryonite here. Huh. Do I want to make sure we can do cryonite? I mean... We haven't had trouble keeping up with cryonite. But, no, I, I still do want to do that. Um... We've got just a little bit less glass than we need to fill these chests in these um, requester chests because we can't quite fit four stacks of everything. But we don't summon the train until there's like a whole train load of glass outside of this. So here we go. Copper. And the bots are immediately replacing the copper. So by the time... The theory is by the time we're putting in the last copper here, um, the bots will have replaced it so we don't get any inserters out of sync. Uh, like holding onto resources that are going to end up stuck in this chest. That's the hope. At worst, uh, we'll be missing three. Like, the, bot the bots will have to replace three copper plate in each of these chests. In the time that it takes to fill these chests. No, why is it on... Oh. Wait, what? How is... Oh, no. Okay. 
I missed some Ys. Well, there's your problem. Okay. We're going to need to tear this up. To, to fix this. Yeah, I thought there was a problem when I saw not a multiple of 10 in here, but that part was actually wrong. It was because this was loading already. But the thing I did miss is just simply connecting those wires. I'm picking up those inserters just so that we have some left that are not sticking out. I'll wait till the train is full. So now we're down to putting one in at a time. Although the inserters are not in sync, so probably one of them will be sticking out. And we need to empty these chests. Luckily there's not too much in there right now. The last design... Uh, Kind of the main problem with it, or bottleneck if you like, is that we needed active provider chests so that we could empty these things. You know what would be great? If we could connect circuit wire to active provider chests and instead of reading contents, we trigger whether or not they are active provider chests. That would be perfect. Although then we wouldn't be able to read from these. Never mind. Okay. You know, if we had just one pure resource that we were going to process here, we could have... Uh... No, that wouldn't actually make a difference. We're still between four and five stacks with each of these. That's good to know. All right, I want to see the next train. Here it comes. Oh, there's multiple trains coming. Stone brick. So the moment these chests are loaded, that will trigger our latch. These will stop inserting and these will start. The bots have to arrive with at least a cup, at least three, let's say. Uh, stone bricks per chest before these things finish swinging, which I think we can probably count on. And once that is full, switch over. Are those in sync? Yeah, they are. They'd better be. We're already half loaded. And here we go. Perfect. That should probably work consistently. Uh, why don't we touch it to this side as well? And then we can start bringing it into all of our other Omni smelters. And we can stop bottlenecking on getting the final products from these stations.
Where are our trains? Well, I'll just give it a minute. Let's do something else. Cool. That was actually a pretty satisfying build. We're getting close to being finished up here, at least for now. We're going to have to go... Well, no. What am I saying? We need to build core mining drills. How much power do we have? Not that much. We need to come back for heat exchanges. Uh, come back with heat exchanges. We've got one gigawatt to play with. Although that is during the day. We need to set up logistic supplies for everything we need for cannons. The cannons are going to go to orbit. And in... Well, we've already set up the receiver in orbit for the space trucks that are going to pick up from here. I can at least design that much. We've got some open space over here, mostly. Uh, since we've built stuff over here, when we trim, we're going to have at least this much. So, I may as well... That's a lot of cliff explosives if I use that space. How many cliff explosives do we actually have? 18? Plus... Plus what? 3. I think we might run out if we try to use the this area. What about over here? That's not so bad. Let's get some drills. Oh, there's, we've actually got more room here than I was realizing. So I'll run a, a line of drills over this way. And on this side as well. Come to think of it, uh, radius is almost 9,000. How big is Penium? 9,491. Okay. With uh, 16 drills, we're looking at 136 per second. So we can approach... This is already more than three belts. Uh, we'll be looking at, like, four belts. We'll pretend we're going to get four belts of core fragments. I think we're going to just use this layout, actually. Oh, erudite, never mind. What's the yellow ore on this planet? Indeed. What? 9,000? Indeed. Rorosaur, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, are we done with this station? Looks like we are. As soon as those chests are empty, let's remove all of this. And... For starters... Put this here, and put this here. I kind of want to flip this around. So that the green wire is closer. We'll put our latch... Well, actually, why don't I look to this this one? Now, I kind of want the latches to be up the top. Can we do that? And then this goes like so. I don't know. We usually do the balanced loader stuff close to the station. Yeah, no, I, I think I like this more. 
How about something like this? That goes uh, here, actually. No. Here. Lol, yes, I am freaky. Wait, where is I am freaky? Oh, it's over 9,000. Indeed. I am freaky. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. That's a lot of bots. I'll give them a minute to calm down. Um, so I kind of want to steal from Pentium. Somewhat. For this layout. How about... Remove all of this stuff. Don't need any storage chests. I wish we could draw a box to remove these. Uh, we'll be receiving... Oh, wait. How are we going to make our delivery cannon capsules? If the spaceship isn't going to come down... It's either spaceships, cargo rockets, or delivery cannon capsules. And we're not using spaceships because the planet... Um, radius is so large, and we're not going to be using cargo rockets, so that just leaves delivery cannons, which means I'm pretty sure we're going to be copying all of that, um, except maybe the storage chests or something. Yeah, I might want to leave room for more cannons, possibly. But other than that, I don't think I have any regrets with this build. Uh, where did I put that blueprint? Here. Shove it into the game blueprints for a sec. Remove this. And I want to make sure the nanoseconds that I build out the signal transmitter, I'm going to switch it off and or change the, uh, change the signal ID. Otherwise, we're going to be sending signals to send stuff to Pentium. In fact, I might just remove and put that there with default settings. Do you really need that much power for that little of drilling? That little? Wait. We're going to have, like, potentially, like, 24 drills or more? I, I want to really go ham with this planet. We've got a huge radius, uh, and it's only as far away as Morpheus. Um, so this is probably going to be the last time we ever need to tap something for copper. Uh, 00001LJ, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Sky Fragments. Full name. Roboports go. Oh, rip. We've got plenty of cliff explosives, it's fine. Alright, let's check on our new build. We need to connect up our wiring. That wiring is fine, actually. This goes here. This goes here. And this goes... Uh, here. I think. Yes. And then this one goes to green wires. 
that's not connected over there or anything. So these two are going to be connected. This goes here. And then red wire to here. Make sure they're all connected this time. I think that is probably... Oh, I didn't connect these across. So we need the red wire that is the memory cell going down to this one. Uh, rather going up to this one. That should do it. Now let's uh, switch this on. Oh, station name. There we go. Now what is wrong with this? We're looking for copper. Why are we not... Uh-oh. Why are there stone bricks in here? A lot of stone bricks, actually. Uh-oh. Let's disconnect this for a second. I thought we had it working already. It is to be expected to have to debug a circuit this complex, though. Okay, so we're loading our copper plate with stacks of 10. We should be able to make this completely reliable if we had big containers, requester chests to feed into these. Um, as it is, it should be 100% reliable asterisk, as long as we have enough bots. Okay, so... Three more swings, and then we switch over. Cool. Oh! Oh, I should have... Uh, I should have realized... Yeah, no, we can only do five or ten inserters per cargo wagon. Because I didn't account for if we're putting in 192 stacks, we're obviously going to have 32 stacks left over. Yeah, that's my bad. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, we've got exactly 67 or 65 left over in each of these. Okay, switch off the station. This one's going to have the same problem after this train arrives. I think we've still got a train on the way. Uh, I'll just remove that for now. Oh, never mind. Get out of here. No, now he's stuck. <laughs> okay. Sneaky bot. Okay. Could you please go back to the depot? Thank you. Um, I'll remove the sixth inserter, chest, etc. on each side for each cargo wagon. Auto save. I think I need to trim a surface or two. And then we need to reconnect these wires. Just the red ones, actually. What's happening with our UPS right now? That's actually a pretty huge dip, and I don't recall getting spiders to build any rail signals.
I wonder what that was about. Is it just the sheer volume of bots? Maybe. Okay. Red wire is connected everywhere. Uh, green wire for chests. Needs to jump across here. And... So we've got... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have... I should never have needed anything but this combinator when it comes to defining how much goes in the train. Uh, how much we need in these chests to go into the train. We also need to connect this again. Oh. And now we're down to uh, 40 chests. So I'm going to divide this by 40. Andy man that can. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, what? Oh, the inserters are backwards. Well. I think it'll be easier if I just send this train away. I've already switched this off. Why is there apparently a train still coming here? I don't know where it's going. Uh, in any case, we're going to remove this rail for the moment. And then, once again, remove those chests. Empty them. I could, I could just mark them as active providers. That might cause less of a UPS lurch. I'm pretty sure it was actually all of those bot orders. Tens of thousands of them. Well, maybe not tens of thousands because they, they can carry four at a time. So about 4,000 or so. Very, very quickly. Oh my god, that bot usage, indeed. Okay, um, I think this one's ready. Did I switch it on? No. Was there anything else I need to reconnect? Uh, I don't think so. So, let's actually put that back. I don't know if the yellow light is a bug or if it's just waiting. No path. You are trying to come here. Okay. By all means. Now then. Well, we're obviously removing those. And then... The sixth one every time. We need a single delivery cannon capsule for every stack of core fragments that we're going to get from this planet. And we need to bring it in. We need to bring five explosives, five iridium plate for every fragment that we're going to get. That kind of scale didn't actually occur to me before. We will not need to be making media defense ammo, uranium things, therefore steel recycling, batteries, 
uh, it's literally just the iridium plate and explosives. But how am I going to... Let's calculate something real quick. If I bring, let's say, 30... Let's say 30 chests full of copper core fragments back. Um, 30 times 48. 1440 times 5. We need 7,200 explosives and 7,200 iridium plate. Uh, yeah, each, each space truck is going to need to bring as much iridium plate and explosives as it takes to fill the rest of it. I could use, hmm, I come across this problem again and again and again. I want to set requests on the buffer chests, but I can't read from them if I do that. How else can I possibly decide when they leave? I think I'm probably just going to have to live with, like, a couple of dedicated chests, at least for explosives and iridium plate. 7,200 over 50 is 144 stacks. And over 40 is 180 stacks. So we're going to have to dedicate a significant... It's going to take a little bit of math to figure out the ratio. But a significant chunk of this ship is going to have to be dedicated to supplying the Iridium Plate and explosives. Unless I use set requests, and then if I do that, I don't know how I decide when to take off. But all my shuttles have defense ammo, maybe some Uranium fuel, etc., and have that chest not included in the logic for launching. Yeah, that's what I've been doing with the space trucks. But the scale of how much iridium plate and explosives that we need to bring for our so-called um, space elevator. Well, not space elevator, but it. this is our substitute for a space elevator for now. Um, can I bring explosives with a higher stack density if I build them on site? I think so. Uh, explosives stacks to 50. If we get coal and sulfur... Uh, if we get sulfur and water from the planet... Productivity bonuses... Oh, it actually doubles it without productivity bonuses. we'd still need to bring Iridium Plate. And if we use the other recipe, we need a lot more stacks. Um, or do we? 5 Iridium Plate, 40 stack size, means we get 8 delivery cannon capsules from 1 stack of Iridium Plate, and 10th... Uh, and explosives is a bit better. Um, explosive stays the same. Uh, one, two stacks of heat shield and LDS is 50 delivery cannon capsules. And then a bit of, a little bit of copper plate. This might actually... Does it actually take more stacks? to build delivery cannon capsules out of Iridium Plate. It 
it's a little bit difficult to work out in your head, but it might be worth doing it that way, just for this. What a headache. This is surprisingly difficult. Um, let's go back to the train station problem for now. Uh, what happened here? What? What? I thought we were ready. Huh? This train is asking for glass. Did I just not remove the copper plate yet? I think that might be it. Oh, this is still switched off. Yeah, get out of here. Alright, we're going to turn those into purple chests. Until we're ready. Wait, no, those are going to stay. Uh... No, no, no. Why did I do that? Those are going to stay the same. Okay, so as soon as that is empty, turn it back into steel chests, and we should be ready to summon a train. A real space elevator would make so much sense to have slash build in this game. Uh, it is coming soon, TM. It's been coming soon for a while. Is there an issue with directly inserting from the requester chests? Uh, yes. Very simple. Um, the issue is that we can't read contents and set requests. Uh, and I can't quite fit a trainload of everything into the requester chests. Wait, can I? Hold on. That may be a really good point. I may be overcomplicating this significantly because I was working from iterating on this, sort of. If I do have six per, or well, twelve per cargo wagon, and just under, or up to four stacks, let's, let's call it just under four stacks of each resource. Um, four times twelve is forty-eight. That is significantly more than it takes to fill a train. The main thing I need to do, if I do it that way... I So, we'll have static requests. We'll have to limit it to, like, four stacks. Slightly under four stacks for most... Um, most of the resources. We need to make sure that it is... We're going to have to assume that all of these are slightly less than the maximum number of stacks. So let's say 3 stacks times uh, 12 times 4. Wait. 144 stacks, that's no good. If we use stack threshold, which I really want to use stack threshold, not actual threshold, because we're dealing with all of these different stack sizes, I, I, I just need to be able to detect when each of these is, uh, is as full as possible. I guess we could use this logic again. So we read from... Uh, 
We set all of our requests like this, so that we don't go over four stacks with these things, for example. This would be so much easier if the bots just didn't have a tendency to go over. Uh... And we're going to have, let's call it 397 times 12 times 4, 19,056. I think I miscalculated something. Yeah, why did I say times 3 earlier? Because if we have like 97 here, 97 here, that's not going to add up to less than, that, that's not going to add up to zero stacks. Uh, it's going to add up to one stack rounded down. So, worst case, 397 times 12 times 4, 19,056 is 190 stacks. Can we count on all of these resources getting up to 190 stacks? I think we can. Uh, Iridium Plate. All of the ones that are less than 100, we give an extra stack. So, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go... Provide stack threshold 190. That should indicate that this is as full as it's gonna get. Close enough. There should definitely be enough for the extra, like, two items. Um... That get put in by these inserters. We're not going to need any of this latch stuff. We are going to need a precise loader. And we're just going to put these requested chests directly in front of these inserters. Just to make sure I don't confuse myself, I'm going to start this part from scratch. Red wire goes here. Green wire goes here. Uh, copy paste that there. Pick a dollies this across so that we don't create another 50,000 bot jobs. Can't really see what I'm doing. Except you only have five now? Yeah. I like how there's kind of just enough uh, space in the chests to have more than enough of each resource. Then we're going to connect this across. We're going to use static requests so that we can read contents. And we're just going to request everything. Instead of reading from the logistic network... What the... Why would that happen at that moment? That was weird. I think it was just the light updating. Uh, instead of reading from the logistic network, we're going to read from the requested chests.
and provide stack threshold 190. Oh, um, is it going to be a problem if we put in extra of the smaller stack sizes? I think it might be. Because theoretically it could get imbalanced. Um, if we're looking for one, two, three, four, five stacks of iridium ingot. Five times twelve times four. Two hundred and forty. Yeah, I think I should just drop it down so that we stay under four stacks. Is it going to have the same... Are we going to reach the same stack threshold with Naquim Ingot if I do that? So we're going to say 37 minimum per chest times 48. 37 times 48 is 1776, which actually puts us significantly below that 190 stack threshold. Uh, so what if the minimum is 47? Hmm. That's a problem. I'm just going to have to count on the bots to... I could put some negatives... I, I could feed this thing some negatives for the smaller stack size things. I think I might do that. So, 47 times 48. Minimum Naquium for this to be considered full is 2256. Um, which is... 25 stacks, 350 more. So if I... How many of these are there? 1, 2, 3, 4. Can we do this with one combinator still? Um, Holmium ingot is 50. Yeah, I think it was four things with a stack size of less than a hundred. Uh, this is going to look a little tacky, but I'm going to squeeze it in here. Naquium, ingot, negative 350. And then... Uh, there's a couple of stack size 50s, let's do those. Actually, let's do Iridium first. Iridium ingot, 97 times 48, is the minimum for this con to be considered full. Uh, divided by stack size 40 is 116 stacks. Uh, that's a lot less. Wait, I feel like I did something wrong here. Didn't we get a higher number for Naquium? Naquitite? Na Naquium ingots. Uh, stack size for Iridium ingot is 20. We're looking for 5 stacks. Just like with Naquium ingot. 97 times 48. That's correct. 4656 is the minimum for this to be considered full for ingots. And then... Stack size is 40, right? 20. There's your problem. Okay. That should be... 4656 divided by 20. Yep. So, 232...
So 42 stacks over is 840. So we're going to pretend there's 840 less uh, iridium ingots. I'll put that here actually. Then the two stack size 50 ones can be next to each other. Uh, so for stack size 50, uh, we're aiming for 247 times 48 is the minimum. Uh, 11, 8, 56 divided by 50 is 237 stacks. 237 minus 190 is 47, 47 stacks. 47 times 50 is 2,350. Seems like a lot, but considering this one is 20... I guess that makes sense. Negative 2350. And that was for Holmium Ingot and Roast. I didn't think this uh, simpler build would require so much math, but here we are. So the purpose of that is... To effectively have different stack provide thresholds for these different resources. Just configuring the circuit. Wait a sec, you mind Aquium already? Yeah, no, not quite. I just want this set up for when we get it. Um, this is actually set up to smelt literally everything now. Okay, I think that might be it. Let's give it a test run, I suppose. Is everything connected properly? I believe it is. Okay, if we get any deliveries of Holmium, Roast, or Iridium Ingot, we know that... This is probably working. Shouldn't those be positive then? Uh, no. So, with the smaller stack size uh, items, um, I'm requesting one more stack. Because we're looking at 11 different um, types of items. Uh, we could fit 4.36 stacks of each, so for the 100 stack size things I'm aiming for to keep it within 4 stacks, uh, and for the other 4 items it works out perfectly to go for keep it within 5 stacks. Um... So... Those negatives are because with Naquium Ingot, for example, uh, the minimum that we've got to consider this full, to make sure this is all balanced, uh, is higher, is, is like 35 stacks higher than 190. So we're pretending there's 350 less Naquium Ingot in here than there really is. And we've got our default request threshold set so high that this isn't going to be recognized as a request. Oh, and we probably need to let LTN know that all of this is here as well as this. So give it a few seconds or so. And we should see... A train coming. If this works, in the end we ended up coming up with something a lot more elegant than all of that 
latch stuff. Of course, this won't work with n number of resources, but luckily we only have 11 resources uh, that we need to provide here. It's very close to not leaving enough room in the chests. Trains are on their way. Kind of stuck in traffic a little bit. Ooh. Oh no, that's stack size 100. I thought we were going to get to... Oh, yeah, yeah, the first one coming here is coming for ingots. That's perfect. So just the fact that it's coming um, tells us that we probably configured this correctly. Because if we set this number... If we set the magnitude of this too high, um, the provide stack threshold of 190 wouldn't have been reached. I think we can probably send our spiders back to the mall for a minute. Although I do want to build this one out the moment that we confirm this is working. Meanwhile on our new planet. That's right, I need to do the math. This one's going to be set to Novus Core Fragment Medium Large Processing. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, Sanj Orbit. Math, indeed. Uh, I think we have two transmitters here. Interstellar Media Defense Installation Ammo Resupply. That one isn't... It, it's on a shared channel, so it's nothing specific. So I think just call it... Sanj Orbit DC Chests. There we go. Let's call it that. And this will be... Sanj... Is it really S-A-N-G-E? It is. Uh, what's my naming convention here? Just DC chest, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, I think off-stream I will do the lengthy process, potentially, of calculating what is... Uh, wh whether it's worth, like, bringing coal instead of explosives. I mean, I'm sure it is, actually. It, it just depends on if we can get enough oil here, actually. Um... There are some coal mines, but those are all temporary, of course. I either need to come up with... I think what I re would really like to do, even though the decision-making for when to take off is going to have some downsides, we'll probably just time it. Um... Yeah, I, I think I think we will just maybe time it as much as it hurts to say that. Uh Oh, 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 I know what I could do. I could read from the logistic network to determine how much proper core fragment is in the logistic network. And I can also read from these chests here. And because I can do both of those, I can get the difference, which means I can indirectly read from the buffer chests, 
even though we are setting requests. In a larger robot network, that would be a problem. But in this specialized network here, where all we're dealing with pretty much is the core fragments, that'll do it. I am excited about this. This actually opens up a lot of possibilities. Um, that applies to probably... I mean, if we're only dealing with the core fragments, why have we got a million barrel here? Please tell me our ships are still in motion. They are. That's the Interstellar Quartermaster. Why are there no ships coming for barrel? Uh-oh. Where are our Morpheus ships? Morpheus, I see one of them. Morpheus 1, Nalvis, 2, Nalvis, 3, Nalvis, 4, Nalvis, 5, Nalvis, 6 is landed on Nalvis. It's still got some core fragments in here. Well then, okay, is barrel saturated or are we, is it broken? Uh, okay, we really, really need to, we, we actually really desperately need to, um, make more core fragment processing blocks, vanilla ones, because we're blocking exotic resources by not dealing with them. I did not see that coming. Uh, I really didn't see that coming. Okay. This might be a really good opportunity to replace all of our Morpheus ships with... Uh, with the ones that run off of beam receivers. That is obviously going to be a long and repetitive process. I might do that off stream with some podcast or something going on. Uh, but yeah. In a way, it's uh, a good problem to have. I'm actually really excited about this. Um, using math to be able to both set requests and read. The known quantity has to be how many chests that we would be setting requests for. Um, like, obviously, if there's just the one ship where there's stuff in the logistic network that we can't read directly with the circuit wire, um, it's going to be pretty easy to figure that out. But, but we will not see off stream. I mean, it's going to take a long time, and I'm just going to be like... I, I, I might need to slightly alter... I, I know I need to slightly alter the drop-offs, because I need to move these out of the way. That's pretty much it. It's also going to kill a little bit of this concrete, because it sticks out one tile further. Morpheus is... The drop-off, that is. The pickup station. Um, where's our new spaceship? This is not going to be a problem at all. So, really all I have to do... Okay, it might be a lot easier than I thought. Um, I need to... Switch off the spaceship launch signals where we pick up our barrel core fragments. Uh, how do I do that? No, 
Okay, the individual ships. Yeah, this logic is on ship. Okay, so... Four fragment barrel equals zero. Get rid of that. And I need to do that for all of the Morpheus ships, because they're all inbound to Nalvis right now. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's do them in order, shall we? Morpheus 1. Let's copy-paste that so I don't have to type it again. Morpheus 2. This is turning out easier than expected. That is one advantage of having the launch logic on the ships. Uh, Morph whoops. Morpheus 3. Morpheus 4. Morpheus 5. Morpheus 6. Already done. 7. And I don't think we're going to need anywhere near as many ships with this new design as well. Uh, and Morpheus 8. Okay. Uh, now all I need to do is build out our core fragment processing area. Wait, this one isn't in motion. Why not? Output is blocked. Why don't we have a train coming for it then? We've got 31,000 coal. If we've got too much of stuff, why aren't we destroying it? 97,000. We're aiming for 128,000 coal here. We've got 97,000. This is our super low priority drop-off. Do we, do we have enough trains? Oh, we still need a lot more trains. That might be part of the problem. Did you finish building the trains? Uh, yes and no. I forgot about this, because I had to wait for the fuel and so on. So we're going to send you to the depot. And then I'm going to get rid of this so that we can put some signals in here. D-Hacks, I don't think you played with recursive blueprints yet. I have not. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Now that I'm this decent with circuits. Uh, this thing here has also been causing traffic problems, although I don't know how severe. Because we don't have a signal here separating this. So let's get that out of the way. And hopefully... I don't think we can fit a signal here yet. No. Let's get you... Moving. And we can definitely fit a signal here now. And I think we'll keep this here in future. I should have already put some signals here. And then I can just activate all of these at once. And once they're clear, I think I'll build another lot. It's not the worst thing in the world if we ever end up with... Oh, I forgot about this. I was trying to make a better fluid depot. And there was actually a really, really difficult problem trying to... Have trains drop off a fluid and then be able to come and pick up a fluid, but not receive the fluid if they're just coming here as the depot, etc., etc. That's an interesting challenge to say the least. Um, okay, so we got our signals. I wish there was a quicker way to do this part. We can't like copy paste the schedules and make it 
Go automatic enemy. Alright, so those are all... I can see by mousing over them that they're automatic, actually. If I go this... put this on manual, the, the arrows disappear. That's how you get the grey goo. Thanks to... Uh, how do I pronounce that, by the way? Chen. Question about modeling ship in space. I got an idea. You launch some ship configuration from land, but when at orbit, it will use recursive blueprints to mod, uh, mod to remodel itself. Cargo and fuel will most likely stay at same spots, but more engines can be added, etc. That's actually a really cool idea. And I guess we can use that. Ch I have to some extent been using that cheese just a little bit. Um, like having to remove uh, containers to be able to take off from a planet. But to be able to automate that cheese, that is very interesting indeed. Like, what if our space trucks, once they're empty and they're going back for more. Okay, it's funny that this is actually cheese, because it makes complete sense. Like, if the containers are all empty, then the launch energy should be lower, right? But uh, with container stress, it just assumes that the chests are full at all times. Um, but you could automate, w with recursive blueprints, I imagine, you could remove all the chests when they're empty. When when it's time, once they're empty and it's time to launch, remove the chests, and then when you get to your destination, put them back to pick up the resources, and they'll have a much quicker, less more fuel efficient trip on the way to pick stuff up. Pin tag what to do next. Uh, Boomark, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Ich spreche kein Deutsch, but if you're trying to convince people you don't, then probably go with yours. Uh, okay. I mean, I remember ages ago I said, Ich sprechen sehr kleine Deutsch, and people laughed because that was like, uh, not good German. I didn't learn a lot of German. I think the furthest we got was Das Bucherregal, which is a bookcase. I tend to really butcher the French of Je ne parle pas français, so they believe me. Should have tagged Veldak, fair enough. Klein is small. Wenig is little. Indeed. I should put some more effort into learning languages. I kind of enjoy the puzzle of learning languages bit by bit, uh, you recognize more of the contents of frequent sentences, and then by process of elimination, uh, you sort of know, okay, that word probably means that, roughly. Ich nicht sprechen Deutsch. Listen to Rammstein. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, we're just about done with our landfill here. We've literally got... Well, we can count it. Uh, we've got six pieces of landfill to go, and we can see four of the bots carrying landfill. Wait, where are you going? Almost done here for this trip. 
I remember we were actually... I might have to retool this a bit, because on Pentium, not that we need the throughput for now, but we were actually bottlenecking on this at some point, I think. The actual machines. I guess we could just put faster modules into them. Are the inserters going to keep up? Well, these ones are easily upgradable. The long arms, maybe not so much. We could just add another chest there. That's not a problem. Uh, we don't need this stuff. Long arm output is always going to be fast enough. Yeah. That'll be easy to upgrade if we have to. Okay. Um, what should we do for the last... Actually, I should probably stream a bit longer. I started late. Oh, we didn't thoroughly test... Oh, oh no. No, 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 no. no. What's this? Unacceptable. Unacceptable behavior. Please drop off that glass. And we need to... Remove and then replace those inserters. Uh, where it's going, it'll have filter inserters to pick up glass and then it'll take the ingots back to the mall eventually. Which will become available to the rail network again. Come to think of it, You know what I should do? And I definitely would have done in the first place if I'd been aware at the time of the 50 logistic bot... 50 free logistic bots before they start crashing. Okay, I need to see... No, 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 don't replace some of those... Oh, uh, no. Oh, the spiders are coming. I helped Ukrainian refugee two days ago. She was with kids and asked for directions to tram stop in Ukrainian language. I answered in combination of Czech, Russian, English. Out of Slavic language were cousins. Interesting. Same as Norway, we can understand Swedish, Danish, Icelandic, and some German. Interesting. Oh, no wonder the spiders have... I thought the spiders had gotten stuck, but they hadn't. I forgot I was trying to build this. Uh, we do have core fragments coming here. And I haven't finished. Uh, I was going to say we don't have productivity modules, but that's fine because we really need to get rid of those core fragments. Um, however, the fact that I didn't finish the roundabout means that the trains aren't actually heading there yet. Are the spiders going to get there without any intervention? Stretch. Stretch. Yes. I hope it's not going to be in one of those places where some of them get stuck. No, I think we're okay. And this is where they stop. Okay. Let's send you through the mall and what I did not mean to click here we're doing a lot on Malvis today come to think of it we still didn't get that tier 4 astro science uh, what gives we've got 600 I know this got to yeah. Oh, that's right. We needed to fix this. Um... This is, again, the kind of thing that would be better if I was just here to fix. But let's go with number one. Number two. Number three. Number 
before. And I guess the spiders will have to pick this stuff up. Might be a little bit of a pain to bring that back some way useful. We might need to loop that around as well. Can't really see what we're doing now. Okay. Undo. That doesn't go in there. Let's add a splitter. Input priority right side. And a I guess it doesn't matter if this goes here as well. Actually, output priority left. That looks kind of silly. Also, the corner is making the stack it's sort of sad. That's not... Also, also... Uh, the corner is probably making this one sad as well. So let's not do that either. Now we just need to... I hope the signs that if it goes back to the mall, it's going to go back to here. I think the provide threshold is going to be too high for that. Oh, that's not science. I mean, it is, but not what I was looking for. Yeah, I'll have to remember to... I'll put a requester chest here. All of the blue sciences. And next time I'm in orbit, I'll just take those where they need to go. Okay. And then... I think if I just connect these wires, that'll actually work out. We're getting the signal type. Why is this anything? I think this should be each, shouldn't it? Each times one output. What? Oh, that's why. Yeah, that'll work. I think we'll load one thing at a time if the train comes from multiple items at the same time. Oh, so that is less than two stacks of Astro 4. Uh, more importantly, it appears to be in motion again. Oh, we're putting all of it onto the belt because... Because I'm not reading from these chests. Whoops. Okay, there we go. And all of that will be going here, and there's our tier 4. Fantastic. Spiders are going to take a sec to get back to the mall. I want to make absolutely sure that they're going to be trashing... Yes, they are. Okay, cool. okay. Uh, we need to drop all of this, please. I guess that would have been... If I was going to do it this way, I should have done it before the spiders got here. No, 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 hurry, hurry, hurry. Is that the last one? No. I think I got it. That was so close. 
Now, is this going to do a good precise load? Or are we going to witness what the problem is, if not? The bots are making it really hard to see the filters. The filters are actually there, but I can't see them through the bots. How full are we? Okay, that seems to work. No. No, it does not. What happened? Oh, I think I know the answer. How many chests have we got? 48? And I forgot to change this back to divide by 48, and if less than 48. Well, there's your problem. I think that's it. I think we've probably solved this loader. Alright, let's start building it on the other side. Pretty sure this is going to be it. Of course, we've been wrong about that before. But it's fine. Don't worry about it. it it'll be okay. And then this goes here. And I was looking for more circuitry that I had to copy, but it's literally just the precise loader. And the only other circuitry that we had to add to this this time is the offsets for the lower stack size things. Cool. I know this looks like a lot of bot activity, but this is literally loading 11 trains worth of stuff at the same time. Um, so that's going to be fine in future. Nice and neat compared to the last build as well. I should learn more math. I feel like... Okay, you, you don't have to be too clever to understand what I came up with for how we're going to indirectly know how much is in our spaceship because we can't read contents from the chest. But obviously the more of a... the more mathematically inclined you are the easier it's going to be to think of something like that. It's very often the case um, with these things that it's much more difficult to come up with something than it is to understand it. There's a lot of clever things like that in circuits. Of course, when you add a bunch of components together, circuits start to look pretty complicated and intimidating. But it's all made up of little pieces that are perfectly understandable. Fantastic. This is working. Uh, let's not turn that on just yet. We need to connect the wiring. We are reading from our chests. And we are reading from logistic train stop output and subtracting what's in the train. And then this goes here, this goes here, and we connect the other side as well. Nice. That's it. Uh, let's, let's not with the old power poles. And then copy paste. Let's get these things patched. Alright, first of all, I'm going to go around 
switching off all of our pickup stations so that by the time we get there they should be empty. I don't know why we keep seeing blue lights on the logistic train stop inputs. Normally it's yellow unless it's a depot. Um, and this one as well. That's kind of far away. I might leave this one to its devices until we actually get there. And we also need to build this. Okay, this one's empty. Fantastic. Actually, let me just delete that station because I don't know if there's a train trying to get there. How does the precise loader work? Uh, okay, so we make it a bit harder than it needs to be by having 6 or 12 inserters for each cargo wagon. Um, I'll show you a slightly simpler version first, uh, and that would be here. So we'd have four or five chests per cargo wagon, uh, because four or five divides into 40, uh, 40 stacks. The first thing we do is we read from the logistic train stop output. When a train stops at a station, Let's see if I can find an example. If it is picking up resources, you'll see a signal for how much it's asking for. In this case, 16,000 copper plate. Uh, for fluids, it's negative one if it's dropping off, if it's emptying. Um, and I'm not sure about when it's dropping off for solids. I haven't really needed that one. Uh, but anyway, if we're picking up say 16,000 space platform plating, we will want to make sure it's a, a multiple of four if we've got four cargo wagons. Um, we're reading 16k space platform plating from here. We don't want these signals because we're using each divided by 16 uh, the, the signals that we get for encoded positions of X, Y, and Z are going to throw those off a little bit. Uh, so the next step is each greater than zero output each input count, and then we just have a massive negative number for any signal that we don't want on a constant combinator. So ignoring this combinator here, Right here, what we have is just the signal for how much stuff we want to put in the train. We are also going to subtract what is already in the train. So we're just going to read from the vanilla-ish part of the train stop. Uh, read train contents. Multiply that by negative one. And then on this green wire here, uh, we have implicit addition and subtraction, so we're going to get the difference between... We're going to get how much stuff we still need to put in the train. If you're just dealing with one... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If you're just dealing with one cargo wagon, that's pretty much it at this point. Um, you can pass on the... Uh, signal to an inserter and you know how much is left to put in. If you're only dealing with one type of resource you can just use that as the stack size control signal. Uh, if you don't know what resources are coming from these chests uh, you'll need another one to divide by number of chests output like S for stack size but in this case we're doing it a bit different. So we've got 16 chests here for each resource. We divide by 16, output each, 
and that is going to give us... We're using set filters. I guess in this case, this is actually the same as enable, disable, um, space platform plating greater than zero. Uh, and in this case, we're using the control signal of that signal as well to set the stack size. Um, that way we're going to put exactly what we need to in the train and we're not going to get the inserter sticking out afterwards. Uh, for this one, it's a little bit more complicated because we've got all kinds of resources coming in from whichever side. So, uh, if you look just here on the input signals, you can see the... Uh, the amount that we're still trying to put in the train. Uh, output S for stack size is dropping as that number drops. Uh, and we're also outputting the, uh, the filter. So we output, divided by the number of chests, we output that filter type, if it's still at least one. We also output S for stack size, so we don't overdo it. And then, because it doesn't divide evenly, um, uh, the next thing I do is, we could do this again with a smaller number, like divided by four, because, well, divided by eight, because there's going to be eight inserters left. Um, Oh, let's just keep it simple. Imagine there's just four inserters that you're going to pass this to, one for each cargo wagon. Uh, we could say divided by four, output this, and output S for stack size. But since it's always such a small number, I just say if each is less than 48, as in if this is going to output zero, uh, output one, or it doesn't matter if we use one or input count here, this is just to pass through the filter to one inserter per cargo wagon. And whenever we're using set stack size, the default stack size, if we don't pass it a signal, is one. So this is like saying, if we're down to less than 48 items that we need to put in the train still, uh, stack size is going to be one, and we're just going to activate these two inserters, these two inserters, these two inserters, and these two inserters. Those are the ones connected to this green wire. Um, and on the red wires we do the divided by 48. So basically, all of that to say we remove some signals we don't need, we figure out how much stuff we still need to put in the train, we divide it by the number of inserters, we set the stack size based on that as well, and then once we get beyond this, uh, we just pass the filter through with a stack size of 1 for the last few inserters. And it's very important if you're going to use a circuit like this to ensure that there's more than enough uh, all of these inserters need to stay in sync because we can read how much is in the train. We can't read how much is in an individual cargo wagon. So we, if you've got more than one cargo wagon, you need to keep these perfectly in sync. Uh, does that about cover it? Any questions? Kuchen? Sorry if I went a bit fast there. Makes sense. Cool. Fantastic. I should make a tutorial specifically for building that. I'm currently editing the first one. Okay, did I get rid of both of, both of these? Seems good. Let's copy paste.
So essentially the bit that was missing in my head is that one of the inserters per wagon defaults to stack size 1 to fill up. Yeah, you could think of it as they all default to stack size 1 um, if you're setting stack size. Um, but yeah, once once we're past the point where we want to swing all of the inserters, uh, we just use a single inserter, or in this case two per cargo wagon, that still works out. Um, with a stack size of one, and by the time you get that low, uh, there's literally just like two swings left to go. So there's not much point in bothering with one more combinator and setting the stack size for that one. Um, I've said this before, but I really wish I could set the control signal based on whatever the filter is. Um, then I would be able to save a combinator or two for these every time. But, alas. Starship's taking off. Yeah, that's the... that's supposed to be a sonic boom, I think. Except we hear it in space as well. Uh, ships in this game, when they take off or land, they basically just teleport in. Because what else are you going to do with modding spaceships into the game? Or at least modding in these spaceships that you actually build out of all of these tiles. Um, kind of hard to see. Let's use the map. Fantastic. I'm excited about this. This is going to give us so much more. Without building any more machines, um, we've more than doubled our throughput with all our Omni smelters in the last couple of days. That's some potential UPS savings right there. We've got one, two, three, uh, four if we count the one up the top that we still need to patch. Looks like this is empty. And this one. Save the trees. One more down south. I doubt if I would have... No, I very much doubt if I would have built this. This way today. If someone hadn't said something. Yeah, because I, I built, um, I started implementing this version after I built it over here. Oh. Oh, Cryonite. Huh, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, Cryonite stacks to 8,000 per train. There we go. Uh, this is probably still as good as it gets for offering anything that's in the logistic network. Um, we're setting the requests dynamically on these requester chests, and then we fill these chests. Once that's full, which we have to define for each 
uh, resource. Uh, we trigger this latch, and these inserters stop, these inserters start, and we do a balanced load. What are you doing? Uh-oh. 52 steel. What do we ask for? 115... Oh, we tried to fill it perfectly. I'm not shocked that this got blocked. I'm surprised we're still using this LDS build, actually. Remember this glorious spaghetti? It took so long to manage to squeeze in four belts of copper from here, four belts of glass, two belts of plastic, no, four belts of plastic, and two belts of steel to fit this to where it was already built. We even had to go down here to get stuff through. Absolutely beautiful. This was not regretty spaghetti. This was this was triumphant spaghetti. Okay. Um Yeah, I don't think I don't think I'm going to do better anytime soon, or possibly ever, than this design for taking whatever from the robot network. Um, but we're just lucky that in this instance we can fit everything into these chests. I was going to say I wonder if I hadn't figured out the precise loader when I first designed this part, but I'm pretty sure I had. I may not have been familiar enough with this trick of offsetting these things this way at the time. If I hadn't thought of that, then this wouldn't would have seemed like a pretty big problem. Looks like we're already done building those. And then? What's this? Nothing. Cool, cool, cool. We're still draining the Holmium plate. 280,000 remaining. For some reason we've got 593,000... Vidamelange core fragments? Um... I suspect I know... I do not know where that is happening. Last time... The Holmium plate was because I didn't whitelist it here, I believe. Um, why are we... It sounds like we're consistently throwing Vitamelange core fragments into the trash, like, into the recycling system. This is where they start. Oh, found it. Okay, what happened here? Oh, I just for- yep, 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 yep. This is the problem with doing this stuff. Or fragment vitamelange. Whitelist. So, we already have it set up so that anything we're requesting from the short train uh, is included in the whitelist. But we have to manually add the stuff that gets dropped off by the spaceships. And I forgot to add it for Vitamelange core fragments. Um, so we've actually been... We've actually accumulated almost 600,000 
bit of melange core fragments in the mall. And that is taking into account that we've got a system to automatically get rid of them. Hey, El Pancho. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What did I miss? Um, you missed that we made a much, much better version of the loader station coming from the Omni Smelters. Uh, it turns out I was overcomplicating things a bit. We have just enough room in... If we put requester chests on both sides, we can put static requests, and therefore we can read the contents. So we can just treat this like a normal station with a precise loader. Um, in order to make sure it's balanced, uh, I'm actually... We're going for four sta- I guess I could have done this a bit more precisely. 16,000 divided by 48. 333. I, I probably could have just set all of the stack size 100 things to 333. And so on. It's fine. A little bit higher because the inserters that um, do the last little bit, we need to make sure they've got extra. Um, but long story short, we've got a much faster loader here than we used to have. Because we've upgraded our Omni Smelters, they're more than twice as fast as they used to be. Uh, since we've still got the Prod 3s, but we've got Tier 6 speed modules. We're going as fast as we can while still having minus 80%, or minus anything less than, like, positive um, power consumption compared to the norm. Uh, so we've got way, 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 way more smelter throughput now than we did a couple of days ago. Literally more than double. No overflow chest. Okay. Uh, we actually need to get some vanilla core fragment processing online. Some more, that is, obviously. Because we've got various core fragments, including barrel, that are not in motion. Because we can't get rid of vanilla core fragments. Um, and I'm not about to add vanilla core fragments to our things to destroy if we get too many of them uh, set up. Instead, we're just going to process them, and if we overflow on, like... What resource are we overflowing on? Vitamelange, at the moment. And we did peek on coal, apparently. We've had so many resources in this playthrough that have run out, and then later have become completely saturated. Coal is an excellent example. Here is 574,000 of it. Um, and liquid rocket fuel. It's almost hard to believe liquid rocket fuel was a problem not that long ago. Everywhere you look, it's just completely saturated. Have you thought about putting in superchargers there? Looks like some bots were waiting to charge. Uh, yes, I did add some superchargers to this one and remove some of the robo-ports, but I forgot to update that part and on other stations. It's more of a priority to swap the, uh, the LTN stations, the loaders. Alright, our spiders look like they are resupplied. Looking a bit full there. Ah, specific delivery cannon capsules. I have no way to get rid of you without physically going there to pick them up. Okay. Let's bring you... I think I will actually... It'll, it won't take long. I'll patch the last one of these, and that is one less thing to remember. 
and then I really urgently need to finish some more vanilla core fragment builds. I think two beaconed ones, uh, white area beaconed ones, will be more than enough, especially if we don't put prods in them. Um, let's put in tier 3 prods until we have something better. That's all of them, right? And then if I copy-paste this... Vitam Lounge gets evaporated once you get to Bioscience 4 and Deep Science. Cool. Have you thought about putting in... Yes, yes, yes. Drowning in coal as well. Don't know what to do with it. Uh, depending on what stage of... Actually, not depending on what stage of the game you're at. I would definitely recommend storing a bunch of it. Um, but that said, I am the person who set up delivery cannons to destroy items to make sure that core fragment processing continues. Because if we stop making iron, copper, stone, vitam lunge, oil, and a little tiny amount of uranium because we've got too much coal, uh, I wouldn't call that a win. It's a, it's a strange alchemy, indirectly converting these resources. But that is economics for you. Oh, we're still doing regular mining of vulcanite. I completely forgot about that. I wonder how much... I wonder how dependent on it we are. 120 per second? Over the last 10 hours, we've been making 9.4k per minute. Uh, 120 per second is... 7,200 per minute. If this is actually 120 per second, I think uh, Rate Calculator doesn't recognize how long it takes these cannons to charge. So it's actually like less than half of that. So I don't think we're going to be in too much trouble when this mine runs out. It's also going to take a while. Uh, are we about ready to leave? I would like to get my character back home for various reasons. Let's carefully place the rest of this. Fantastic. I can't make heat exchanges while I'm here, can I? I could make one. It's actually just copper. It's basically just iron and copper. I don't know how far we would have to go for that. Maybe I would have set that up if I'd realized just how short on heat exchanges we were ages ago. But we'll just come back to finish this one. We've got way more than enough power here for now. We're not a about to start the drills up. Okay. I thought we switched these off. It did. We're just waiting on these trains to finish. Stations picking up from core fragment processing has highest priority. Uh, yeah, anything... So, whenever we have a secondary output, like junk data cards, for example, 
I need to prod this. Oh my goodness. Since when does the secondary Vulcanite block have full throughput? What? This one has a higher priority, I'm pretty sure, because we've got better prods. Yeah, super high priority. And this one is normal priority. Uh, we don't have that much here. I probably just... I mean, we had at least a couple of trainloads come here at about the same time. Hmm. That's a lot of Vulcanite. Okay. I got distracted. What was the question? Uh, stations picking up from core fragments processing has highest priority. Basically, yes. Uh, whenever we have a... No pass. Oh, right. Whenever we have a secondary output like this, whether it's uh, core fragments and stone, or junk data card, thermo fluid that's been spat out, or whatever, or scrap, Whenever we've got a secondary output uh, that we need to get out of the way, otherwise the primary output is going to stop, just like this. Um, my default is provide priority 100, um, as opposed to... Huh. Well, that's... That's not supposed to be priority 100. Um, the default priority, 0. Um, and this, this one I've got set up. Same color as an active provider chest, uh, provide priority 100. This basically means get rid of this as soon as possible. Where are our spooters? That's right, I was waiting for this to empty so that I could replace it. And once this train leaves, I think that'll be it. Fantastic. Uh, why don't we remember to throw in some superchargers this time? It'll be interesting to see when I, repl when I patch all of these to have as many superchargers as is practical, it's really just the placement, not the throughput of the superchargers, that matters. You need the bots to decide to go to them instead of the regular robopods. Um, but I was talking about this earlier. In our module block in space... Uh, when I put superchargers in here, I noticed we had a lot more bot, a lot fewer bots in flight because they didn't have to hover around so long waiting to recharge, uh, and that I think actually reduces how many bots are going to crash. The fewer bots in flight, and the less time they're in flight, um, we're going to end up with fewer bot crashes. I think by By patching in some superchargers. I should be able to see that trend pretty clearly on the kills screen. Maybe not yet. Okay. I need to copy this from here. Fantastic. Just have to make sure there's enough housing for the bots, that's all. We've got... 2,600 in this block, so that is... Uh, only eight Roboports. That's a lot less than I was expecting. A lot less. So how many bots have died from attrition total? Oh god. 
let's assume that it's like 99% of logistic bots that have died to attrition, right? Uh, 217, probably like 216, 215,000 or something. Rip. I did avoid spamming bots pretty much as long as I reasonably could, but, uh... Certain throughput and UPS considerations had me start spamming them eventually. I mean, consider the Omni Smelter. We need... Uh, where can I demonstrate this? Let's put down a furnace. Okay, so we need one... Uh, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, twelve, if we count Naquitite. Uh, twelve different resources need to find their way to... Yeah, here we go. Twelve different resources need to find their way to each of these furnaces. Uh, I did do a version with belts. Um, I, frankly, I was pretty pleased with what I did manage to pull off. This was all of the basics, uh, iron, copper, steel, glass, stone brick, but none of the exotic things. And we needed lots and lots of belt, lots of belt spaghetti down here. Um, we also... With this build, there's not actually enough throughput to, for example, keep glass going. Um, but what we do instead is we have continuous input of all of these resources. Um, and we have a chest. Well, we have several chests. Uh, we've got half a chest of storage for each of our input resources, pretty much. So we accumulate a whole lot of sand. Um, where is the sand? Oh, there's no sand here right now. That's why. Yeah, we accumulate half a chest of sand for each of these while we're smelting other things. So, putting aside that we could have done better with wide area beacons as well, not that I'm sure how we would fit them here. Um, we can fit way, 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 way more furnaces in a smaller space. It, it, and it scales up. Like, the more different resources you're trying to provide to these things, uh, the worse belts are. Two hundred and seventeen thousand bots killed, indeed. Have you researched a lot of robot swarm to minimize bot attrition? Yes. Um, in fact, we saw some bot attrition over here for the first time in forever a while ago. Um, geez, five thousand. What are we at? Let's double check it. Swarm safety fifteen. Fifteen times five hundred. We can have 7,500 robots in a robot network before they start crashing. Oh, not before they start crashing, before the crashes start doing damage. Unfortunately, the swarm safety doesn't keep the bots from dying. The Yeah, the only point is that we, we don't damage this stuff when a bot dies. Okay. Um, all of that lurching was because the spiders were building rail signals up here. We definitely want them to finish those roundabouts over there before coming down here to finish this build. What's this? Oh, we're missing electric boilers as well. 
we need kind of a lot of them. Well, actually, we don't need as many as I've placed here. Part of it was to be symmetrical. Um, but if we have... Oh, I actually finished this. I just, I just forgot to get rid of the to-do here. Uh, this thing outputs 795 water per second. Why is this empty? If we're having trouble getting rid of core fragments, why is this empty? How much are we asking for? Two train loads? Limit trains two? So that should mean there's like always a train waiting to drop off here. Considering... Considering barrel core fragments had stopped because we had too many core fragments. Not sure what's going on there. We've still got 65,000. Um, maybe I should increase the train limit here? Oh, we still need more trains. We still need a lot more trains. Let's do that. We're going to... Uh, I kind of need... Why don't I just move this robo-port? And then I can keep this blueprint the way it is. Put some trains here. Signals. Why isn't it copying the signals? And I also need to make sure that there's rail down here as well. And here. Fantastic. So I believe that is 10 more trains. Fantastic. Once those are built, I'll put them in motion as soon as I get reminded that we don't have enough trains again. Here comes our first core fragments over here. Fantastic. And our... Oh! Well then, this is why we inspect things. Anything else that I forgot to... And we copied that over here. Okay, cool. Wonderful. Uh, why don't we not do that? And not do that. And the sushi must flow. All of these are stopped because of the balanced loaders. There we go. This belt will be a lot less saturated once everything sorts itself out. Still don't have anything on this side. Oh, there it is. Uh, we are going to need some electric boilers. Let's get our construction spiders to pick those up. What's this? Random stone brick and glass. I think those bots have been chasing these spiders for a while now. They might have intercepted them when it, they got back to the mall, but they must have missed out. Alright, let's get our spiders to resupply. Come back with uh, electric boilers. Let me add some tags here. Pulverizer. Actually, 
shouldn't this be vanilla core fragment on the map? Core fragment. Core fragment. Core fragment. And furthermore... Or fragment. Fantastic. Uh, this will run for a little while until... Oh, it's already happened. Until the water is full. There we go. Didn't take long. Nice. I'm really looking forward to being able to completely retire all the spaceship stuff. Uh, not spaceship stuff, cargo rockets. So much, so much stuff we can dismantle when it comes to that. So much old stuff I still need to dismantle. Let's bring our deconstruction spiders over here. This thing's surprisingly not mostly empty. Why is it stopped? It stopped because it ran out of water. Uh, hmm. Okay, what I'm going to do here is... Wait, what? This was, this was still switched on. Wait, why don't... Why don't we have water here? We've still got water pickup stations. You're joking. Why... Okay, first of all, why are these disconnected? Second of all, shouldn't water have been picked up from this place? Because we're net positive on water here, and it had it, it actually stopped at one point. Uh, and I had to add... I actually forgot to set the recipe here. Um, uh, I'll set this to if we're greater than 24,000. So there'll be water available here to the train network, if it wants. Um, and we'll delete the rest. Um, but yeah, before I put that there, this got full, which blocked everything here. And yet... I see... a request for water and nothing here? Maybe there's somewhere else it was dropped off. I don't think we're going to be low on fluid wagons. It's probably just cargo wagons. Yeah, it's definitely cargo wagons. We've we've saturated fluid wagons. So, I guess we're not deleting this just yet. I would rather get all of that iridite plastic, cryonite, etc. processed into output. Um, and then once once something runs out here, uh, then we'll dismantle this thing. What about the old beryllium ingots? Now this one we can get rid of. It's not worth my time at this stage in the game to try and salvage this sulfuric acid. Especially since we're not having trouble with 
I guess it's not the stage of the game so much as how saturated we are on various inputs with infinite supplies. That's going to take... Well, it's mostly just the contents of the chests that are going to be a little bit of a problem. I don't know how empty our deconstruction spiders are these days, though. They're carrying a bunch of nuclear stuff. Or the receiver builds. Not that much, though. loving the energy beaming. I love seeing these things run and knowing that there's no fuel to worry about. Alright, where are we on our planet? How much, if anything, more do I want to do before we go? I think I've got the core mining drills to place. Yeah, let's do that. And... I could put more solar down, but why? We're doing energy beaming. Uh, I'll take some belts, but my inventory is too full. And... That'll do for the moment. Back to this build. How many prods have we been making? In the last hour, zero. That's not encouraging. 700 and... We've actually been making more in the last 10 hours than these other two. I might have filled the requests for it. 213. We're asking for 500, I believe. 4.8k. Okay. Alright, we're not in danger of accidentally hitting our limit. For productivity modules. That's fine. What resources are we missing? Wait, we've stopped. Why have we stopped? There's no recipe here. What? What? Oh, hold on. How many do we have? Productivity module. Uh, 29k of the small ones, Lamau. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 500 sixes. Oh, where are they? What? We're still trying to get rid of those repair packs. But that still doesn't explain where our rods have gone. It's still not connected to another network or anything. Logistic storage, 500. On the way, zero. Huh? Maybe I should just... Oh, they're in a buffer chest. Wait, are they? Yeah, buffer chest. Wait, then how did we get them over here before? I'm very confused. Is there a reason this needs to be a buffer chest? This is a passive. Okay, so let's review how this works, and I'm finding it awkward to look at at that angle, so let's do this one. So we are setting the recipe. Buffer chest is here. We don't discard items. We do empty inserters' hands. Uh, 
keep crafting until zero. Okay, good. We have each greater than zero output, each input count. Uh, our target for each tier of module. Each times negative one output each. Okay, so if we have it, we're saying we don't need... If we have 250 here, we're going to subtract 250, and we're not going to be trying to craft that. Um, and here we've got our prerequisites. So all of this wire is just reading, so that we don't... The moment it's in the inserter's hands, we know that we've got it. And then, if tier 1 equals 0, don't try to make tier 2, if tier 2 equals 0, don't try to make tier 3, and so on. We just multiply that by negative a million. Pretty straightforward, actually. Um, the only thing I'm confused about... Okay, I could see... I can see why this is a buffer chest. But... Why, if that's a buffer chest, is this a buffer chest? There's a speed module in here, how did it get there? I guess it has to be taken from here to here? But that doesn't... Hmm... I could... I could set this as a filter inserter blacklist tier 6. And the. remove the request for tier 6s over here. Uh, so they'll stay in the passive provider unless requested. Apparently they would be requested down here, that's not what I want. Was there a reason in particular that I didn't include the tier 6s here? I don't really think so. So we're going to exclude tier 6 modules from being requested to this requester chest. In other words, we're whitelisting them to be allowed in this robot network. And then this should probably just be a requester chest. So that we can take from buffer chests. That's one way we can do it. But at that rate, I'm not sure how we ever had tier 6 modules going to here. I was going to say, yeah, I could blacklist it so that Tier 6 modules stay in the passive provider chest. And we would change that to whatever tier we're building up to. But even with tier 7s available, um, at least at this point in the game, tier 6s are expensive enough. It's kind of at the sweet spot of attainable. Um, I guess we could go tier 7s for speed and efficiency. No, we use a lot of speed in space. So maybe just efficiency. How much more do we get? Fi negative 560 as opposed to negative 400% power consumption. That's actually pretty huge. That probably means fitting a whole other speed 6 module in a beacon, or two even? Energy consumption plus 200%. 
Uh, currently, okay, on the ground, for example, we go with, here's a good example, I think. Uh, we go with eight? I thought it would be seven. Well, this is eight efficiency sixes, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven speed sixes. We get negative 80% power consumption on everything. Well, let's just assume our machines are all four prod sixes. Uh, so that is... Power consumption is plus 280, uh, plus 560%, and then half of this, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 700 percent. So we're at 1260 percent energy consumption minus uh, 400 times 8. That doesn't sound right. It seems like we're really doing overdoing the efficiency modules here. Yeah, I thought it was usually like 7 efficiency modules. Oh, I forgot to halve the bonus for the efficiency. So half of that. 1600. Yeah, that's what it takes to get minimum power consumption. Um, but if we're aiming to... If, if we're aiming to wash away 1260 bonus percent or so with tier 7s, that's actually like 3. No, wait. Uh, six. Yeah, so it's definitely... It's definitely one or two more speed module sixes. And the only place we use efficiencies is in beacons, so we don't need that many of them. Might be worth upgrading those. Uh, it is just about time to finish the stream for today. There was... Oh, definitely want to do this. I was going to say there's probably something I want to make sure I do... Right about now, something I was trying to work on. Oh yeah, I was trying to fix the module production. Right, are these all moving? We're missing some rail for some reason. But otherwise, yes. Modules. So we're never going to request tier 6 modules here. Uh, we need to request from buffer chests. There we go. So that's 500 prod 6s that we didn't know we had. Good thing I checked on them. I mean, imagine if this was inactive for just hours and hours. And meanwhile, we're just wishing we could put prod sixes into a lot of important builds. Alright, so that's fixed. Beautiful. Uh, we're still waiting until the end of time before we can get enough plate, space platform plating, uh, to play with our sushi again. We did get enough for a train load, though. I don't think I've set it up material for. I don't think I've put a request here for it. 16k, okay. Request stack threshold 160, stack size is 50. 8k represents a train load. Why are we not picking this up? Because I didn't switch this on. Because I never updated the station. Okay, so 
that is just a data card provider particle beam shielding data wait don't tell me this is the only reason we haven't made material 4 yet I think it is no we need laser shielding data as well okay and I believe the only problem with that was blank data cards. But now we've got a thermofluid output problem because I never actually connected it. 10 out of 10. Uh, this is connected up here, I believe. Yes. Good. Let's get our spiders down there. Uh... So we've got blank we've got a lot of blank data cards. Well, okay, considering it's just one chest, it's not that many. And that is our first Astro 4 science complete. Absolutely beautiful. What else should we research, I wonder? Oh. Material science is supposed to be finished. We could would initiate Naquim processing. Perhaps. Uh, but for today, let's find someone to raid. Uh, I was going to raid Mucky, but I don't see him today. Rated into two the few times lately. Cyclomatic, maybe? Why not cyclo? Factorio HPD. What is that? Hardcrafting power load deep mines. Oh, we're about to find out. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for hanging out. El Puncho. I think you showed up earlier, right? Can't scroll back that far. Have a great day, Raren. Thanks for hanging out. You have a good day also. And... Are our spiders here yet? I'll, I'll make sure the spiders get here and we'll get these uh, data cards flowing. And then I'll hit the raid button. if Unless I run out of time first. Was late today yet? No worries. Upua ta. Bye bye and thanks. Take care. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good one. Spiders, get there. The raid timer is running low. Take care, Mars. They're so close. Come on. Why are we at UPS 20? What just happened? Oh, probably because they were all stepping over big things, actually. And... Beautiful. thing. T-Hacks up in here. Plastic. Okay. Shout out for my good friend T-Hacks. Welcome in Raiders. Welcome in and welcome to my version of crazy. <laughs> 